6 p.m. We are in the center office building on the second floor if you'd like to join us. Um, we have membership. What have we got? Starting at your end. <laughs> Eric Gaspar, present. Ted Winglass, present. Roy Bishop, present. And Ed Goodwin, present. So we're uh, missing one. Conservation Commission will hold this meeting uh, in person with the option for virtual attendance. In person attendance will be at the meeting location I just listed. Um, then you can go online for go to meeting access um, to join the meeting and dial in. Saying that, we have a quorum check. Do we have any walk ins? Mm -hmm. No. So we can move right into. Go ahead, read that. Okay. Please. In the interest of saving time, the Sturbridge Conservation Commission will hold all public hearings tonight for work within a wetland water body or resource area and or within the 200 foot buffer zone to a wetland water body or resource area in accordance with the Mass Wetland Protection Act, Chapter 131, Section 40 and associated regulations in the Town of Sturbridge Wetland bylaws and associated regulations. We will not be reading the newspaper ad Prior to opening the first hearing for each project, the applicant is to submit proof of notification to abutters within 200 feet of the subject pro property line and proof of legal newspaper advertisement. If these items are not submitted, the public hearing will not open. Additionally, prior to the start of each public hearing, we will announce the location of the project, the applicant, and the applicant's representative. If any of the visitors have not legibly signed in yet, please do. Also, if any visitors are recording this meeting, please let us know. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We will go to 3 Dowdy Road, request for determination of applicability for our new house addition. The applicant is Bill Grugian, um, and he's the representative. Um, bingo, go ahead. Great. How you doing? So, so 3 Dowdy Road, I'm trying to looking to put a small addition directly in the back of my house. It's within 200 foot of the buffer zone. Um, the plan is to uh, not go any closer to the wetlands. Uh, the foundation will be piers to put as little impact on the ground as possible. Plus, because of the topography, it's mostly all ledge. I can't put a foundation in any way. About a third of this project is going over an existing deck which currently has piers. Um, so about 300 to 280 square feet will be new addition going directly off the back of the house, going back um, 16 feet off the house and approximately 19 feet across. So if you can see there the existing house, yep. the shaded in area will be the, uh, uh, the addition. You can you got it. A little clicker there too. It has yeah. a red. Uh, you can just, show. Has a, yeah. We're very fancy here. You are very fancy here. <laughs> is that me? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, this is the existing house. Um, this is my existing deck right here with my existing uh, entryway coming up right here. Uh, that will all be uh, being replaced. This small section here is a current bulkhead which will be removed, and then this section right here will be the actual um, addition. Obviously, the wetlands are down here, um, and the the way the land goes it goes that way there's a ridge right here and the rest of it goes this way so say about 10 feet from the edge of this 10 to 12 feet there's a ledge here where it brings all the the water back down this way okay. becky okay uh, we did a site visit out there with um ted um don't have any concerns with the project the only thing i guess i was going to ask is um do you think that the septic tank will need to be relocated? No, because okay. it's a little misleading here because yeah. it goes actually away from the deck. So again, this is the existing deck. So we're not we're not going any further back this way, okay, um, so and that's one reason. Then. We originally planned to do something a little bigger, but when we you know we got into it, we realized. I met with the zoning board yesterday because of the uh, property line is is, is uh, uh, we couldn't go any further that way. So we kind of rearranged it to to make the entryway different. And one reason why we want to do this too is right now there's a door right here when you walk up the steps it's dangerous I mean, you have to actually go down a step to actually get in the house and we're not getting any younger and uh, 
I watch my parents walk up those, and it's, you know, what we're trying to do is, you know, we like the town. We're going to, you know, been here for my whole life. Family's been here. Um, we want to make this a re huh? <laughs> yeah, right. So, we, I mean, we're going to retire here, so we're trying to make the house more retirement friendly, put a bedroom on the first floor. So that's, that's the goal. Um, again, it's a small, if you don't count the deck, which is existing, it's really a 300, maybe 280 square, 300 square foot addition on piers. Okay. So, right, the only thing is when we were out there, uh, Lenny put erosion controls in the plans. We didn't really see that those were necessary. We talked about stockpiling, got a recommendation that stockpiling be on the other side of the um, property yeah. or enclosed if yeah, needed. Up in, here, up in this yeah. area. Yeah, so I'd recommend um, moving forward, issuing a determination for this project. It would be a negative number three. We just have a few conditions in there, some of our standard pre-work and sign-off conditions, and then any stockpiling that may be necessary, necessary can be protected or deposited on the east side of the lot away from the wetlands. Um, positive 2B, we're not doing a resource area approval here with this determination, and a positive number five, uh, subject to the local bylaw with the conditions noted above. Okay. Any comments down, starting at the end? None, I think it's a good project. Yeah, I yeah. went out there, looked at it, yeah. you know, very minimal impact and drainage slopes away from the Right. Straightforward. Yeah. Looks good. Yeah. Um, motion to close the public hearing. There's nobody here, so I guess, yeah, may I have a motion to <laughs> close you the public wanna, hearing. <laughs> anybody online? We're the only ones online, yeah. yeah. Stop sharing my screen there. So you, you've made a motion. Do I have yeah. a second? A second the motion to close the public hearing. Any discussion? Any none, all in favor? Eric Gaspar in favor. Edwin Glass in favor. Roy Bishop in favor. Ed Goodwin in favor. Um, With regards to the RDA at 3 Dowdy Road, I'd like to make a motion that we issue a determination of a negative 3 with the agent's conditions, a positive 2B with no resource area approval, and a positive number 5 with the agent's conditions already stated. I'll second the motion. Second by Ted. For 3 Dowdy Road to for the request for determination of Any applicability discussion on this? house addition. Seeing none, all in favor? Eric Gaspar in favor. Ed Winglass in favor. Roy Bishop in favor. Ed Goodwin in favor. You're all set. Thank you, Eric. I just want to say Rebecca and Aaron have been fantastic. You guys are lucky to have them. Thank you for saying that. We know that. Yeah, I'm sure we, you do. We, 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 get, sure. The, we, we get that every day. Work. So, right. yeah, thank Great. you for saying that. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Yeah. Would you like us? We have to either certify mail it to you, or you can make it out to their office. No. Okay. No. I'll, I'll shoot you an email. I'll probably have it ready Monday afternoon. Does that work? All right. Perfect. Thanks. Thank have a good one. Nice seeing you. Pens and tails the other night. That was it. Oh yeah. It's extensive. What do you want to work on? Oh, you're one of those. It was the first one. <laughs> so, no, no. It was something else. Somebody else yeah. said something nice about yeah. us. I can't remember already. See how happy that makes us when someone <laughs> says that. <laughs> Oh, before I forget, um, our, our next site visit date would be on July 5th, before the next meeting. I just wanted to check mm -hmm. if okay. around. that was okay. I will be driving back from Maine, so. That's a site visit? Yeah. That is technically the day of site visits, yes. Yeah. Uh, so far. And the town is off on the 4th. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Sorry. I know of one RDA three. for a smaller three. I know of three. What? Yeah. Oh, sorry. All right, we'll have a few site visits then. And then also with this Charlton Road project, um, if you wanted, we could do a site visit. I kind of held off on that because I know they didn't stake the site out. It's the three yeah. existing house that people are living in. They figured if we wait closer to when the peer reviewers are going, um, I imagine the people that live there aren't going to want these stakes in their lawn <laughs> for a long time while they're mowing and things like that. Um, so I just figured. To wait on the that. renters huh? are they renters yeah sure i think so yeah all what? the all the property addresses were oh the owners were different, different than the owners yeah you know what i'm saying yeah so we can just hold we can either go those on the, the fifth those are the properties across from the whatever the cracker barrel and yeah that whole area. yeah so if you want to go we can what are they putting in it's a starbucks and a urgent md med. bed md Something MD, like an urgent, an urgent care, yeah, yeah. yeah, different company. Yeah. Having a coffee option on that side is. of the highway would be the entrance. The whole thing is dangerous. Yeah, the, the yeah. state. A lot of they them. might 
only be allowed to have right hand in, right hand out there, I think. But, it would make but, sense. But, oh, sure. and just so you're aware, too, it was just in a um, meeting, the Cornerstone Bank over there will be getting an application soon. They want to do some minor changes where their drive-in will be put in the back of the parking lot, but they'll be shifting their front driveway, potentially, <clears throat> to line up with um, the Noble Gas Station will be opening over there. And the state um, went back and forth a little mm -hmm. bit about that they wanted them to do a roundabout <coughs> there but they agreed that they don't have to do the roundabout right now okay so that i was gonna yeah. so that they're allowing the gas station and travel facility to open as is without a light but if he builds the electric vehicle facility there then he has to put a light there but otherwise he does not have to put a light there but aren't they what setting up for electric vehicles that? now <laughs> what's that Aren't they setting up for electric vehicles now? I think they'll have charging there. I I think uh, so, but that won't be for electric vehicles. But they they're going to have like a whole like showroom EV center and EV with, center with like something with Nichols College. I had heard. I, yeah. I haven't really been involved in the discussions well, there. I but. saw it, but uh, they're going to allow a left hand turn out of there. Yep. Well, hey, you can do it out of Treehouse. You know, so. Well, it's a little bit further down, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People are rolling road at 60 and yeah. turn lane uh, there. Yeah, you know? you're more willing to take a risk when you're coming out of tree. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There's a lot of driveways over here, but yeah. So that's the update on that. And so. there's going to be trucks coming out of there, right? Right. They have. They have. They're going to allow fueling. trucks to go left hand across Route 20. Yeah. That should find be an allowed. alternate route. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Poor people on Fiscal. <laughs> So do you want to do you want me to ask them to set that up for a site visit that day or you want to yes. wait you want yes. to go fit the yeah. fifth it's okay. fifth up here okay Ed, you're here okay. yeah and we can always go back to because we will be doing um some peer reviews over there is it 13? no you can say then mullins now yeah uh what's today so we're going to get that mark though right because take out yeah I remember correctly when I stood down there when we were doing the uh, solar field. That wetland is pretty damn close to those houses. Um, you have a I have it on the plan. There's an existing condition plan. I don't think the houses are that close. They're within 100 feet, though. Yeah, they're within. Yeah. yeah, and this limit of work for this project will be within 25 feet of that wetland. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All so right. if you guys want to do the. Um, the two Mullins. All right, I filled it out for you. So you just got to sign. And then it says signature board member below it. I don't know if you're supposed to have another board member sign it that they verifying that. It's just a horrible form, yeah. whoever created it. Uh, unless you guys did. I didn't create it. I didn't create it. <laughs> create it. <laughs> we'll just blame it on the state. <laughs> it just, no, the whole thing is confusing. It is a little bit. Member name commission. We'll look at making a this new one. How's that? Right on Maybe our new administrative assistant can help with that. Yeah, I'll sign so for I just you. want you yeah. to acknowledge that. I'll, I'll acknowledge that you were signed it hey. twice. Hey. The date is 6 22 yeah, 23. <laughs> Doesn't like it. Uh, yeah, there you go. No, you do. Or do I need to do that? Yeah, you You're need the to do that. Right, so oh, boy. It makes me sound yeah. oh so important. Get out of here. All right. So what is today? The 22nd? Yeah. So we're at 615, 212, 216, 226 Charlton Road. Notice of intent, DEP file number, and we don't have a number? No. Okay. Sturbridge Retail Management, owner is Catherine Thompson, 212. Christine Lena, 216, and Stephen and Teresa Seletnik, 226. All right. All right. So this hearing has to be postponed. Yep. They failed to um, provide proper butter notification. So we are going to postpone this to the July 13th meeting of 2023. That meeting will start at six o'clock. July 13th, huh? Okay. We have to go to. Yeah, we can bounce around here a little bit. So what are the um, meeting dates for the rest of the year? I know I have them, but I'll just ask that question while we're looking for time. I have to go time. on the website, we'll see. Um, August 24th. Oh, you want to go in the... Yeah, July 13th, August 24th, 
Aaron's gonna pull Hold it up for a second. date okay august 24th mm -hmm. september 14th october 5th october 26th november 16th and then december 7th the december the second one that would have been in december would have been christmas week so we opted to just eliminate that one <laughs> so uh, you've got we'll start only the one weekend. in september is that what I one in September, the 14th, October 5th and 26th, 26th, November 16th and December 7th. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Glenn. All right. And then would you, while we're thinking about it, just we'll put together soon a 2024 schedule to bring that can be discussed at a meeting, probably not for a little while, but since we are just having one in the beginning of December, do you want to try to the first week of January have a meeting? Well, it would be January, well, Monday is New Year's Day, and then Thursday the 4th. I like to look at how they fall before oh, okay. I decide that, if you Never. don't mind. <laughs> so it's something like that from a planning perspective uh, brought it up the last meeting we've started to bond projects I'd like to put some thought into that so we have a rule to kind of fall back on yeah, yeah. and have some discussion with that see if we couldn't get some thought on bonds some, but yeah on different projects and this, bonds this would be that this would be that so it's not just a number that come up with out of the right right we only had a couple consistent numbers we're using single family new and commercial new but we don't Do have, have any of that printed on is that available in the, it's in the uh regulation schedule so well we don't have a yeah this there's no That's schedule yeah we can start putting of, thinking about some projects and you guys can think about what you bring it to you and what you'd like so then we can have that as a yeah, we should also document. talk about at the same time the process of finding Yes, yeah. And, and how we go about yeah. that. Same thing. Although if there was someone who wanted to help work with us on these a little bit, at, like that would be helpful too, like a little lead. Yeah. Maybe, you know, if someone wanted we, to. You mean on a recommendation? I'll, I'll help you with the one yeah. I brought up. Okay. Yeah, sure. The fines, I mean, that gets a little more involved because it's, there's a town bylaw that would have to be changed in order to change our fine policy. Um, but we could think about but even executing the one we have yes better ways to do it yep yeah yep i agree oh one thing i do want to bring up um 625 all right we have a little bit of time is actually went to um it's the mass society of conservation professionals annual uh conference Aaron and i went this year and um the agent in stowe one of the things that stowe does is um to keep the the commissioners involved in some of the projects is in instead of like everyone going out to a site visit the commissioners will each take a project and they're kind of the the lead in a sense on that project so they'll go do the site visit I mean, these probably people have been on the board for a little while so we can talk about how that would work and then they'll come like at the meeting they'll tell the commissioners about the project you know it's just an option um the other thing that they do too is that after the project is done, or maybe someone else does this, I forget if it was them, but um, when a project gets started, like a commissioner would maybe, you know, say Berry Farm Road, you, you know, Ed would be the one that would maybe just stop in once in a while and check in on a project or something like that, see how they're doing during construction. And that kind of keeps you involved in actually seeing, hey, when a project gets constructed and, you know, you're looking at plans here, but when it, the reality of it on a site is, yeah, that tree that's five feet away from where the foundation has to go, it's not gonna stay, you know, whether the engineer says it is or not. But you know, you kind of get the, the realness of the project while it's being constructed too. So if anyone had an interest, it's something that we could always try, either with the before or just the afterwards too. We used to do that. 
Oh yeah. Yeah, we did that back, um, and I can't remember that it worked any worse or any better than what. Yeah. What we're doing now. I mean, we're lucky if we get two people on a site visit now. Um, if you had to, if you limited it to one specific, then you're going to have a higher percentage of misses. Or getting another date to do it, I don't know how you go about it. Yeah, you know? it would take a little more coordination yeah. on our end too to let applicants know if you're going. But it did have the, the it did have a um, a better focus. It was one individual that that went and came back and presented to the board. Yeah, and there's a lot of projects where you want more than one set of eyes on it, anyways. But maybe some of the smaller projects that could be something to start with if someone yeah, if someone like, had. Well, this was a good example. The ones that we. Yeah. Yep. Week. Yep. The smaller ones. Yeah. 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 But so, so where do we want to do that? Open to add yep. that. You know, if you want to do a planning session, can you do a separate meeting? Some can can stuff go into non-public. You know, I, I used to be you know at different roles before, but I don't know conservation. Can they ever do that type of stuff? To yeah, we can. We can. We can. We can go non-public and. You have to publicize it. Yeah. yeah. Never, uh, or one needed. person can come. You can come in our office at any time and work on you. Yeah. People. Yeah. 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 True. That I, I understand the quorum. But, yeah. But mm -hmm. the, he was asking about the developmental. Oh yeah, we could have that. Of uh, being able to be together yeah. to talk about it. You'd still have to post it as a meeting, and if someone wanted yeah. to come in and sit, they could. Yeah. But yeah, we'll, certain requirements. But I just didn't know whether that was uh, something that a yeah. commission could do as a mm -hmm. body. So. That makes sense. I, I'd like to see it done um, like one thing at a meeting as a part of the meeting uh, at the end rather than have a special meeting for it. It just it's yeah, a, we used rather to do that than too. another meeting. That, that yeah. worked out pretty well. Oh. At the end, or you could do at the beginning too. Yeah, any way you wanted to do it. You know, I think when yeah. you guys were doing the bylaw regulations, you, they started the meetings earlier. You used to start your meetings at 6 30, and you started at 6 to have right. time to do it. Beforehand, we're already at six. So. Yeah, well, it's five thirty. So I, I think the either or after, but after is respect to the public, so that they yeah. can go yeah. to yeah on with their day. So all right, we are close enough to six twenty-five. Well, you got two minutes. Two minutes. What do you want to do? Well, I would just wait because if there's anyone who's in a butter coming, you know. Well, can we yep. approve the minutes? Yep, we sure can. I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes from the May 11th, 2023 meeting. Do I have a second? Second the motion. Head seconds. Any discussion or amendments? Hearing none, all in favor? Eric Gaspar in favor. Edwin Glass in favor. Or Bishop in favor. Ed Goodwin in favor. All right. Hell with you, Becky. Now I'm on to 625. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 60 Fakwa Road. No. No, Notice no, of intent. No. Accessory building with tree removal. DEP file number 300. Do we have a number? We do not have a number. Hey, Glenn. Good evening. Good afternoon. Whatever we want to call it. Evening. I'll put the plan up, Glenn. When you're ready. Thank you. Uh, just for the uh, record, we have receipt of legal ad and the butter notifications. And you're ready. Come on, hold. It's too fast. How, how, how do we end up with the, the rocking table? How do we end up with the rocking Thank, table? Thank Through the chairman when you're ready. Yep. Okay. Becky, you're all set? Yep. Go. Well, I have been trying, working to track down the file number. We haven't received it. We understand that the commission. 95% would not close the hearing without the file number, so that's, um, if that's the case, we will be asking for a request. We will request a continuance. It is uh, three pine trees in the open. That's lawn area around them, and uh, he is proposing to remove those three pines, which uh, we can see on the plan. There is also a proposed building in the bylaw, 100 to 200 foot zone. Again, the, the pines are in the riverfront area, the outer riverfront area, and the 
the garage is going to be in the uh, bylaw of 200 foot zone. That uh, the, the line to the right, the arcing line, that's the riverfront. And then there's the pond, and we have the zones on that the wetland 25, 50, 100, and 200. Uh, there's a stockpile area outside of all resource areas when he digs the foundation. That would be that area, lower left. It says, here we go, Glenn Meathead. Yeah. Right here. I'm sorry. There it is. <laughs> oh, damn. Glenn, what are we thinking? Uh, we go to a lot of these meetings, and there's no point as we just kind of like, okay, Shrewsbury the other day. The building, the pines, the riverfront area. That's a 200. Yeah. Pond. BVW land on the water body in that 200 foot zone, 100 foot, again 50. There is a, there was a question about any asphalt from here to here accessing to that. It's not shown on the plan. We were uh, still waiting for Joe Levesque to revise the plan to show this asphalt, right, that location. He did, he did and you sent it to me and I didn't, I didn't put it up here. I apologize, I didn't see it. Uh, yeah, that'd be interesting if he sent it to you and I didn't get it, but uh, we'll have it for the next meeting. Uh, at least I will have it. Steve, where am I going? And I, I think the only other question, it's all gravel here. This is that outwash at Hydrologic Soul Group A. If the commission was asking for any, any infiltration, we would, um, we could still entertain that. You sketched that and you sent it to him. To yes, I did. I sketched I it in. Okay. I had two red, li red lines here and here, and I said, get it on the plan. That's because it was, uh, uh, Miss Rebecca asked whether or not there was going to be asphalt between there, and, and, and I called the client, and he said yes. He's at a, a meeting tonight. That's why he's not here. And uh, that's the project. Um, no rare species. It is in a rare species area, but it is existing single-family house. We showed the exemption for work on a single-family under, and it is described in the project description what exemption it goes to. Under Heritage Program, page, and here we go. Exam, re, construction or removal of structure that are secondary, that's primary, yeah, so, yeah, secondary to the uh, primary residence and located when the existing paved area and lawfully developed and maintained lawn or landscaped area, which this is on residential property, provided there is no expansion of se said existing paved lawn and ex landscaped area. When I, proposing to expand the paved area, well, existing paved area. There would be a question there, lawn or landscaped area. So we're putting a building on an existing. We have questioned rare species on this, and they said, we just did one in Falmouth, and they said that would not, would still, would be exempt. So, um, because it's a single family lot, an existing lawn area. If there's any question, then we would have to uh, show you a piece of paper from rare species saying that, but we have a couple from them explaining on these single family lots in existing lawn area that they're exempt. So, yeah, whether or not it's, um, you're not working within state jurisdictions, so you wouldn't have had to file the notice of intent right. to them under the Wellness Protection right, right, Act. Right, right. I actually, I thought it wasn't mapped as priority habitat regardless, but right, if it, it, if it is priority habitat, you should check in and make sure that they're okay with mm -hmm. it, but under, um, state jurisdiction for the Wetlands Protection Act, you wouldn't need to, to file it for the exemption. The, 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 yeah, the Quinnebog in the past, I had worked on it about 20 years ago, and it was wood turtle at the time. Mm -hmm. They could have changed since then. There was mussels at one point, too. I, well, there's still mussels up above at Nine Holland. We know that. Yeah, so um, uh, only um, comment there, across Farquhar Road, there is a, a wetland down there. I kind of just measured off of the aerial photographs. It looks like the 200-foot buffer zone would just be kind of at the limit of work anyways, but there is some jurisdiction down there, so I just want to note that. Note it. Mr. Levesque, is, uh, we put one mean annual high water flag. They only hired me initially to flag the wetland on the pond. I did put a, the closest point of riverfront area mm -hmm. to the right, and he picked up that, and, and uh, also he, he went along the whole river and picked up the riverfront, and that's how we... We have that blue line. I think that right when we get to the approval point in time, we can just indicate what we're approving, uh, which flags we're approving, and not the rest. Okay. Thank right. you. No other jurisdiction. All right. Anything else, Beck? Nope. Mm -hmm. no. 
I was just going to ask, are you happy with the proposed plantings given the overall? Yeah, I think that's, overall? yeah, and I put that in the notes, sorry. I think that's that's fine. You know, when you're up at this property, there's a lot of treed areas, forests okay. that are around this. I think it's I think it's sufficient. I so. mean, it's it fits the two to one ratio. As long as you're happy with what's going in, I'm comfortable. Okay. Thank you. Tad, what do you think? I'm not that familiar with the projects. What? We that went was there. the one we went to. The one with the turtle, remember? This is oh, the you almost turtle. killed the turtle? Oh, no. I didn't run it over. <laughs> there was a turtle in his driveway. And actually, I just happened to stop where I stopped. I didn't I'm sorry. See it. I'm sorry. Painted turtle? It was snap. Yeah, painted. painted, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, no, the project's <laughs> fine. The project was fine. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. I'm also good. I have Thank no problem you. with it. Yeah, and a DEP did email today. I don't know if you saw that. No, I didn't or see it. Or your office saw that. They, had a, they said they weren't going to release the file number. The fee was wrong. Remember we the discussed fee. the fee? Yeah. We discussed it. Well, it was probably his. Uh, oh, okay. The, the fee because uh, half of the riverfront area. And yeah. they, what did they say about that half of the riverfront area? They said it wasn't the, I forget what she completely said. There's a little narrative in there. She got a couple sentences. She just said Okay, so the they fee. want more money and yeah. give you more money. Yeah, that's probably a good We'll look at that. That must have been. I was in Natick this afternoon. I didn't see okay. it. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. All right. And so you're so going to have to continue it? Yep, and you're going to update the plan. Yes. Um, Pay the fee. Yep. Can you just note the wetlands down on the other side? It's, yes. You, I don't think you need to delineate it. It's not going to affect this project to have a full delineation. We'll have Joe note it. Yeah, just, no, just work with him on that. Thank you. Wetland across the street. Thank you very much. So the next meeting would be July 13th. Thank you. 7 13. Asphalt. So make a motion to continue the meeting until July 13th. Do I have a second? second? Or make sure there's anybody in the public here. I don't think we have anyone online. Anyone in the audience like to speak on the project? Thank you. Seeing none. Um, any discussion? No. Oh, who, who is my second? I'll second the motion. Okay. Eric Gaspar in favor. Edwin Glass in favor. Ray Bishop in favor. Ed Goodwin in favor. Thank you again for your time. Um, I believe. Thank you. Keep an eye on those turtles. I had a wood turtle nest in my property uh, on May 30th and uh, snapper right after that. And we screened it as we have a rare species collection permit to screen and protect the eggs for human commensals. Yeah. So we hatched 131 off the property in the last 11 years. Wood turtles. Mine was on this project. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> All right, we're, we're on schedule for... Um, I doesn't remember his lovely morning he spent with us. I do, I do. Actually, it was a great morning. Well, I, I, this is where my mind was, was on this project, the no, septic I, system. So. I, we appreciate it. Uh, new members, thank you. All members, all members and new members. All righty, we are now at 530 uh, Lead Mine Road. Notice of intent, septic system repair and wetland replication, DEP file number 300-1163. Thank you again, Mr. Chairman. Glenn? Becky, you want to start or you want Glenn to start? Glenn can start. Which plan do you want first? <laughs> My way? The, the Mark's plan, if you can. It's, uh, well, this, this, uh, began. It's a interesting plan. Let me say if it was 14 years ago or 24 years ago. Let me see what we have here. The project started quite a few years ago. was never received a certificate of compliance. And, and then the, the person, the gentleman, Mr. Stevens, has passed. Mrs. Stevens was living there. And, um, and then she just sold it to Miss Bacon. And the project, let me see if we have it here, 95. So a little bit more than that. In 95, the order was issued, 628, so uh, what do we have, 25 and 3, 28 years ago. And um, <clears throat> never, uh, again, closed it out. There was a wetland crossing. Here we go with this pointer. The wetland crossing was here. The wetland begins just off-site. Uh, this is down gradient. And so it had been flagged by Mr. Farrell. He has a certain wetland line that extends up and comes around and then down this way. Uh, 
I was asked late last year to, to look at it for both a septic repair and to, to uh, the replication, although it says right here, uh, uh, created wetland. It was never created. It, it kind of, uh, so I went up there to look at it. It hadn't been made. It might have been just the way that the plan was, was uh, stated. Created wetland, 1125 square feet. Again, it was supposed to be in this location. I found hydric soils in a predominance of wetland plants in that location. My wetland line is this line. Cuts across. It's upgrading of Mr. Farrell's. Again, his is this darker line, and also here. So my replication area is upgrading of the hydric soil and wetland, 50% wetland vegetation boundary. Here, I did work to avoid any large trees or as many as possible. It's a northern red oak, a couple of hemlocks, some white ash in this area. So leaving that alone. The crossing itself was called for and it's on the old plan driveway wetland alteration from driveway crossing in 94 was uh one two zero zero square feet we we ended up finding that there was a slight width problem with the driveway crossing we will say that when we come in front of conservation anytime if we're going to cross a wetland we use offsets on both sides of so the contractor knows that this is uh, both the erosion control barrier should be exactly the limit of work on the crossing. So that the, and then if there's any question with that, we'll use offsets of 10 feet from the wall that would be made. We do this on lakes when we're doing lake uh, repair or new walls, uh, replacing old walls. That way the co contractor has a definitive location to, flat, to measure in, maybe 10 feet in a lot of cases. That's where the toe of the slope of the wall is. If that was done here, then the, the driveway would have been put exactly where it showed on the plan. And we have that surveyed before we, before we start work, uh, just to, especially if it's just wooded. So we know exactly where the erosion controls go. Uh, we always uh, survey our erosion controls, always, so that they're exactly where they show on the plan. So there's no problem when we go for the as-built or we go for a certificate of compliance. And normally there's an as-built if you have a wetland crossing because you're going to lose X amount of square feet and you're going to replicate X amount and it's stated on the order conditions and that's what you're to do. In this case, the wetland crossing was slightly 100 and some odd square feet larger than what had been called out. We had shown the gentleman, Mr. Wig, Wing Glass and uh, Rebecca and uh, our age of sec uh, uh, yes, everyone there. We, um, we <laughs> Aaron, we went over there and looked at it. And uh, the question was, is are we going to remove the boulder wall? and remove this stabilized <laughs> rock wall to bring it in a, a couple feet? Or are we going to ask the Conservation Commission, because we are under 5,000 square feet, it's a, we, um, we, if we were exceeding the square footage that you're allowed to ask to alter, uh, in exceeding 5,000 square feet, which is a, is, the, is a limit under 1055 4B1 through 7, then we would have had to take up the driveway, and we have done this before, bring it in, they were newer than this one, bring it in and then build the thing exactly like the commission approved. Here we're asking for that, we're asking for leniency, that we have it a little wider, we're making the replication area larger to make up for that, that small amount, which is written up in your project description, our project description. So here it goes. It proposed to construct one 1,248 square foot replication area for a 1,200 square foot. Obviously, back then you weren't requiring any more than the one to one. And today, you I think you are asking for more than one to one, but the state law is one to one. So we were very close to one to one. 1,200 loss, 1,248 replication. What ended up being out there is uh, an area for 907 square feet of loss. So let me correct. It was 975 square feet of loss. And what we actually have... This is 1995? This is 1995. We, you you might have... I think you were here. I was. You were. So in the end, we have... Let me go... Where's my replication square foot? It is on the plan. The wetland replication proposed... The area, 1,200, please, Glenn, where'd you get that? Well, we have a, it actually, probably I can't read it. It's 12, 
13 square feet. It's in pink. We do apologize. I have to apologize for this plan. I, we never work with a plan that is like this. This is an overlay of an overlay. This is his original plan, and it's kind of gray and black, and, and then he puts stuff on it, but I'm not the engineer. He is. So it does describe what we want to do. It's not as clear. Sometimes we call these Crayola crayon plans. It's not as clear. It's like the old hand drawn, but it, but it does give us the numbers. It was surveyed, and we are replicating what we lost. And I would, and I would oversee the replication area. We do give you a replication detail, as we normally do. We'll uh, give a spot elevation in the wetland. I'll be there during the replication. We make sure we get the hydric soils. We already checked it. There are hydric soils within 12 inches of the final grade. Uh, we uh, do have a planting scheme, which, will, which is a generally a six to seven foot spacing of the existing native wetland plants found in the wetland, winterberry, highbush, blueberry, uh, northern arrowwood, red maple, cinnamon fern, seeded out with New England uh, out of a Hadley, his wetland mix over there, which is uh, Mr. Anderson. So we're, we're proposing that. The, committee, the DP did issue a file number on it. I don't believe there was any questions on the file number, Rebecca. No, there wasn't. Correct, there wasn't. There wasn't. <laughs> and then um, the second phase of the project is the septic system failed. I just heard from Neil Jackson out of Belchertown, who designed the new system, which is on that plan. So we have two different plans. This, uh, and it's tentatively approved by the Board of Health. I did talk to the gentleman, the Board of Health agent, about a week and a half ago, and he said, we're just waiting to hear from the conservation, and once the conservation, if they think it's set, it's 90 feet from the wetland. The law is, under Title V, is 50, and so it does meet, it didn't need a variance for a septic repair. Sometimes we get less than 50. Well, again, with 90 feet away, it just clips it. That's my wetland, 100-foot uh, buffer zone from my wetland line is that 1A, 2A, 3A. It's on the left-hand side of the driveway going in. The only question became, and I did ask the client from uh, Ted, if, I don't, if you don't mind me saying that name, first name, uh, Ted asked if any of those, the bald cypress, there was a uh, Japanese maple and one additional uh, planted sapling that was planted at the time of the house construction, but they're at the limit of the lawn. I talked to the realtor, George Goulis, and he said that if we had a condition, if there was a requirement, because there's no other trees coming down, no native trees for that, we would, uh, we would replace any even planted tree if, need, if it needs to come down. That would be up to the septic installer, making sure, obviously, that he gets uh, his, I believe it's 10 feet around the system, three to one slope, but, but to ensure that there's no root systems that would come into the system, we're, we're going to make sure that. It's an existing lawn right now, but these are at the very limit of the lawn, the three trees. Okay. Thank you. All right, let me go back. Staff recommendations are all as they are? Yes. Yeah. yeah. The other thing is that, well, I wrote it in there, but we would get an as-built um, for this property when the project is complete to yeah. fully document it for our records moving forward um, since yeah. we have the, the kind of the sketch wetland replication plan. So mm -hmm. um, we went out there, we did a site visit. Septic is completely within a yard. It's not going to expand anything. No concerns with that. Um, and then the replication area as far as the... Where's the, the old septic? To the right. It's actually up here. Right. Well, that's it there. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And as far as that crossing, um, I think it doesn't, it doesn't, I agree with Glenn, doesn't make sense to pull back some of that material for that crossing. It, it just seems to make sense to do the additional replication here. We looked at the area. It appears suitable. And in this situation, I don't think we need to require any additional information about that replication area, um, considering the, the context of this project. Okay. Appreciate that. And just to know, I know it's in the detailed agenda, but we do have um, monitoring requirements. Um, upon completion, we would get a report, and then there are um, a, a, is a time frame, as Glenn knows, for monitoring of a wetland replication. State requires yeah. two. The commission can require up to five for 75% success uh, for plantings there, too. So. Years being. Yeah. Years. Yes. 
And you have a two thousand five hundred dollar bond. Correct. Yeah. I think uh, we you. do a surety bond. Sure. Yep. Just to make sure it gets done. We didn't get done last time, so. We, thank you. And if we could, three, we, we would move directly into getting the septic. He's already uh, lined up a septic installer. We, and that same person we're going to be using. So we, we would do this this summer during the drier period of time so we're not messing in that wetland in a wetter period of time. All right. Eric, what do you think? Um, the, on, the only question I had was around the, the surety bond, it, kind of half of what we do for a single-family home. So if, one I hadn't seen before, given what Ted had brought up earlier, but mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. Okay. Ted? Yeah, yeah I agree with Becky, the leave the driveway uh, infrastructure as it is, and uh, they were ornamental trees that had just grown to maturity. You know, they looked really nice to me. So, I from know. a realtor perspective, if I if I could keep them, I I would. But there's a lot of trees there, so if they got to go for the purpose of the septic system, that is what it is. Roy, what do you think? Yep, I'm good. The stone wall is not going to be touched, right? Right, the stone wall. The which one? The one along the road? Yeah. Um, no, no alteration of that. We'll, we'll move around all trees. We'll protect any trees getting in there with the machine. All material for the replication, the excess will be going directly off-site. None of it will be stockpiled. We can say that. Yeah, and um, obviously the organic will be salvaged. Yeah. Oh, I did have one more question. Becky, um, you had said two years is standard. We could do up to five. Given, given the totality of this project, what would you feel is well, warranted we can, in this case? I think we can write it that way. Per state, it's two years, and the commission, um, it could be up to five if they haven't reached that 75% success rate at two years. And they'll have to add new plantings okay. in. Okay, so that, that's yeah. the language yeah. that you would yeah. recommend. Yeah, and we had that, okay. remember that wetland restoration along Route 84? Um, yep. We were able to close that out after two, um, two growing Three seasons. seasons. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they, that came out really well. So we elected to, to close that out earlier. So okay, if there's issues, then then they got to yeah, fix it. If it's it less and, than seventy five yeah. percent, then it continues. Okay. Can we go back and find them for not having done it correctly for the last twenty nine years? Mm -hmm. All right. So <laughs> should should we? <laughs> Could be an should we probably? Yeah. Will it be enforceable in court? Well, I'm just definitely. I, I only make this point because <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. you know. Of where we end up. Um, well, I think the surety bond should help us. Yeah, right. I right. mean, that's the that's the thing. Property. If they if they don't um, if they want to just leave that twenty five hundred bucks, I guess we'll have a fund to go and. Well, Glenn, fix do you their know problems. if the intent is to convey? Like, are they is the intent for this the people that are doing this work here for them to stay here forever, or do you think they'll convey it? Because if you want to, because if they want to, if they want to sell it, they're going to run into this issue. We're, this is going to be done this summer, and the, the intent was, if I could, that, that they're staying there. Ms. Bacon, okay. they bought it to, to live there, the new people. They're okay. Not, they're not temporary. Got it. So then they wouldn't mind, I guess. We're all temporary. Well, <laughs> I was going to yeah, say. In life. We're all just renters. Uh, short-term temporary, all right. not, not short-term. All right, great. Um, Thank the Lord. <laughs> motion to close the public hearing. Anyone no in the public. audience? Nobody in the audience? All right, I'd like to make a motion to close the public hearing. I'll second the motion. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Eric Gaspar in favor? Ted Winglass in favor? Roy Bishop in favor? Ted Goodwin in favor. With right. regards to the project at 530 Lead Mine Road, DP file number 300 1163, I'd like to make a motion to approve the project with the agent's uh, recommended conditions. I would like to specify the replications require two-year monitoring to 75 percent to be extended up to five years if that 75 percent threshold is not met by two years I have a second i have a second on that okay. on favor eric gaspar in favor ted winglass in favor Roy bishop in favor ed goodwin in favor with regards to the project of 530 Lead Mine Road, DEP file number 300-1163, I'd like to make a motion to approve the project under the Sturbridge Wetland Bylaw uh, with the conditions already noted above and also an additional $2,500 surety bond for the wetland replica replication. I'll second the motion. Any discussion? All in favor? 
Eric Gaspar in favor. Ted Winglass in favor. Roy Bishop in favor. Ted Gooder in favor. Thank you again. All right, Glenn. We thank you. He's still up next, so. <laughs> oh man, I was trying to get I know, I just second. hearings last night and shoes were in mind. I, I tried to reach out to you earlier today. I don't think I had your phone number correct. I tried to find it online, but um, the applicant for the project you're here for asked for a continuation to our next meeting. Okay. They're working on some project revisions, they said. Time. So okay. I looked you up online because I had your, your name from the letter yeah. and I left some odd person a message, I guess. Oh, okay. do you, the only people that's listed must be my parents. Oh, do you, yeah. you want to just give me your number and that way if I'll have it in case like, it happens again, then I can let you know you drive out here. Thank you for coming. Well, we were talking. We might say that most replication areas that don't function and don't meet the performance standard, it, it's planting, but also it's the water table. If you don't have that, if you don't have hydric soils within that 12 inches, you're not driving that replication. We we just did Diamond Chevrolet a couple of years ago, and it, it was uh, 10 to 12 inches of non non hydric soils underneath the 12 inches of organic put on top, and so it was growing upland plants and. And so we, we make sure that we get the hydric, we check for the hydric soils before we say we're going to build it there, and then we, we oversee it while it's being constructed so that we're hitting hydric soils, and then we put the 12 inches on top. So the water table to drive the wetland is, is key. Thank you. That's going to kill you, but I want to tell you that they didn't want to do it when they did it, when they agreed to it. They didn't want so the fact that it didn't get done. <laughs> oh, oh, doesn't, way back. Doesn't amaze me. Really? It's coming back to them. When they're my clients, they I know. Do it. I know. They do it. We 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 <laughs> work to sign right. these things off as within the two years and whatever else. All right. So we are now. I was going to add too. So DEP has new guidance on wetland replications that came out, and a lot of it is right looking at groundwater and doing like some modeling and ahead stuff of time. ahead of time to make sure you're citing it in the best location. So yeah, something and, that in oversight. New also projects has a. Initially, oversight. You don't have to be there the whole day, but you want to be there when we're first digging to ensure they understand clearly, and yeah. then you come in at the end of the day. Something. Yeah. All right, we are now at 60, 660 Main Street. We have an RDA, a Bernal Pool study. And where do you want to go with that? You want to go? I can if you want. Yeah. So we submitted um, the two pools. As, as we go into the site, if it's on the plan, uh, the driveway, this is the old Galileo. It's uh, in front of that little marijuana. You know where it is, maybe, because yep. you're from Sturbridge. The nice white barn. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is, the c cannabis white barn. I, I, they're all over the place. It's a scourge. But anyways, you go up the hill all the way back, and on the right, there's a large parking lot. Okay. To the right of the parking lot, between us and the residential neighbors, which came to, some of them came to the first meeting when we were talking about it. There are uh, two pools in there, one natural in the lower pool, which we call one, in the upper pool, again, both to the right of that parking lot. The lower pool was bit created in 62 when they developed this site. They blocked off the outflow for the water and it created a four and a half foot to five foot deep pool. You see the pines still sticking up in the middle of it because they're underwater most of the time. No fish in it. Uh, it has, we found 10 spotted salamander egg masses. I took photos of each one of them. I put a stake where each uh, egg mass was. It, those are on the eastern side of the pool. The most amount of sun hits there, the, these frogs and, and salamanders. We have wood frog too, thousands. Well, we, we uh, scooped the wood frogs. We have them in a net. We, we took the egg masses, showed photos. I put stakes with the orange ribbons. They just were picked up today by the surveyors because Rare, uh, Rare Species Program, Heritage, said we want more egg masses. We, we, and you're not clear as to where and how to get there. We gave them the map, but we're going to give them lat latitude and longitude on each stake. So that would be pretty clear. In each stake. Well, there's only 10. <laughs> Ten stakes, and then in the upper pool is one for the wood frogs. It was so shallow, there was no spotted salamander egg mass. In fact, it's dry right now. So that's an ephemeral pool. The upper pool is shallow, 10 to 12 inches in depth, but it's pretty large in size. We, uh, we're going to be showing you the, the edge of that pool so that we can show you the 100 and the 200 foot vernal pool buffers that you have. Uh, and we'll be uh, giving Rare Species Program more information uh, as they asked for earlier this week. So we, we, we did put it together, and it's now all online. So we didn't, uh, so my office, which is my son, he works with me, is uh, he was going like, well, this appears. But they, as we know, they require five egg masses, 
and it, sometimes it's still one of these. So five egg masses with the spotted, and uh, we'll give them 10. We'll show them exactly where they were. We have ground photographs of all the stakes with the orange ribbon, so you can see them over there. And uh, we'll just beef up our documentation. So you will you'll see this documentation. Um, I'm going to be gone. As you, I'm leaving anyways next Thursday from Europe. I'll be gone for uh, 13 days. So when I, if I don't have time to get it in, we well, will ask. Yeah, I think that you did submit it, and he did send that he, an email to me just so I knew that you were asking for He was asking for some more information. I think, you Jacob know. Jacob Cubble? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, actually, I was there last week for um, okay. the training, and I bumped into yeah. him. So Very I think it's fine to move forward with the determination. Um, I have a recommendation here for what the determination is. I think under the bylaw, we can just say submit additional information to certify Vernal Pool to Natural Heritage. They'll be coming back with a project, so regardless, we'll make sure they get that certification done. So I think it's yeah. fine. Mm -hmm. We'd have to continue it a fourth time. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Good? I'm hoping. So you're looking to close or continue one more time? Well, I, I'm fine with closing because we're going to wrap, we're going to, like I said, the surveyors, Thompson Liston, were out there all, all this week doing topo, uh, wetland flag pickup, and, and these stakes. So we're going to give you a complete, and even the bank of the, as we know, the BBW surrounding the pools is um, is not where your edge comes from. It, your edge for Vernal Pool comes from the mean annual high water of the pool. So I went out and staked the three pools, one off site back left and two on to the right, the exact top of bank. You can confirm that when you come to look at it, but, but that's, that's the, the bank edge, and then it's uh, vegetation and upland coming from up there, so we, we'll be clear on that. I did also have them pick up the outflow points so that if there's a question on the 100-year floodplain, we'll show that there's a crest outflow for the two pools on the right. So they fill up so much, and then they spill out in sheet flow and hit into uh, this, uh, hydro this hydro soil group A, and they don't actually go down, down to another wetland. But they do have outflow, so we call them BBW, not isolated lands. What do they do with all the egg masses? What are they, are they? The, the, they're breeding and they're living in those woods. The spotted. We're talking about the. Um, talking about natural heritage? Yeah, natural heritage. We're going to be sending them photographs of the egg masses. What are they? They're they just. Sending them the actual. No, 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 no. no, no. Well, I, 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 I pick them up in the water and I take a picture of each one just to the surface and then I let it get back Let's down. I don't take them off the branches that they're hanging from. Normally they're hanging near the surface so they can get that most amount of heat to yeah. the egg mass. And they are, there's none on the western side where all the shade is. They, you know, they have their instincts and they're going where the heat is and they're breeding over on that side where most of the sun is and the, the warmth of the water and up near the surface so that they're uh, developing. So you just have to have, sorry, yeah. like a photograph them all and send them in because sometimes people, you know, right. are trying to document things and they don't have enough information and maybe it's because mm -hmm. they don't have it, but they're trying to certify a pool. Not, not the case here, but it, do you ever think about like, it, taking a white bucket cover and sticking it in for your photographs? Oh, yeah. we've done a number of things. Uh, I got a clipboard you can borrow. A clipboard. Yeah. Oh, the yellow, yellow one. Yellow one. This one. Oh, yellow one. That's oh, what it's for. Oh, Braden Fanich, you mean? Yeah. I have one of his, too. Um, yeah. I should have suggested oh, Mr. Oh, yeah, that's Fanich. his, isn't it? It is Brandon, because he's the yeah. one that does that. Yeah. yeah, I didn't realize he did he's, that. Um, he's yes, a great no, guy out of Rhode Island. <laughs> we, we, he's in Sutton. Yeah, I'm glad you guys found him because he is a. Wait, is a that the resource. guy who did our peer review? Yeah. 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 I, didn't I was even like, know why that. do I know that name? I just read his name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's had Mostly a Rhode Island in Southern there. Mass, but Sutton, and then you found him. So Other question here. How about the quality of the water there? Are you doing any water testing you know, at all? With, with this, these pools? There's yeah. nothing. It's all wooded, woodland all the way up. Down below that, that's all buried. Uh... Oh, we're above that. Yeah. It, so we. It's uh, tannic in color, but it's clear, clear tannic brown yeah. tinge. Right. But uh, we don't see any. Uh, in fact, I think I told you. And I'll get out of here, so if you don't mind. Uh, so the uh, the wood frogs, polywogs on the lower pool, because it's four, it's still four and a half feet deep, are up to two to three times larger in weight. And I told you this the last meeting. Yeah. And I went to get some of the wood this weekend. I was there, and I was going to take some of the ones up above and weigh them to the ones down below, which are still in the pool, still breeding yeah. at the surface, still yeah. clustered. Well, they're there, but the pool up above is dry. So they, they either all dried up and died, or they are forced to metamorph, metamorph which some amphibians do morph quicker if they have to. So they're gone anyways. But, but the masses were up there. We took the photos. 
they weren't, Jacob wasn't happy with the photos, but we're not, now we're not going to be able to get the, a, a clearer photo of the polywag itself up above because it's dry. But we're going to, um, we'll, we'll wrap everything up on the pool number, the lower pool, which is one. And we're going to... Um, we're going to treat right. them as certified anyways. Right. And yeah, they're going to be... I'm going to move this along. Yeah, so let's go. So oh. thank you again. I'm sorry for all that. Have a motion? Add anyone in the public. Anyone in the public like to speak to this issue? No one online. So no one's there. online. Motion to All close right. the public hearing. Second, Second the motion. I'll let Mr. Church me know. All in favor? Eric Gaspar in favor. Ted Winglass in favor. Roy Bishop in favor. Ted Goodwin in favor. So, Becky, given what you had said at the top that we're okay to um, mm -hmm. close okay. and um, make a motion to approve, yeah. are there any additional comments? that you want to add into the yes, determinations. As, as, yes, as part of for the server, under the Sturbridge Wetland Bylaw, uh, we require that the additional information is submitted to Natural Heritage to certify the pools. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. So, Good. Uh, with regards to the project at 660 Main Street, uh, I'd like to make a motion to issue a determination of a positive number one, a positive two uh, B, and a positive number five with the agent's notes and also the stipulation of that would just say for the purpose that you'd yeah. like the, the pool certified before a development project comes forward, right? With those two additional uh, notations made by the agent regarding certification of the vernal pools and, heritage. and from heritage. Do I have a second? Second. The motion? No. Ted? Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Eric Gaspar in favor? Ted Winglass in favor. Roy Bishop in favor. Ed Goodwin in favor. Have a good evening. Thank, Thank you very much. Well, Say hi to your son. Hi. Tell him we miss him. Oh, uh, you're going to have to see it. Did you ever see him? Yeah. Oh, you did one time? Yeah. Nine Holland Road with the yeah. drone? No. Uh, no, um, over uh, behind Barnacle. Where? where? Down, what's the road to where Dave uh, Barnacle lived? Lad. Lad, Lad, Lad Road, down Lad Road. 27 Lad Road. Oh, yes, when we, were, when we had the forester out there, we had to flag the wetlands again because the forester did them. Oh, well, yeah, I remember. Uh, you go a little bit taller even since then. Well, he can't things. get any better looking. Uh, he wanted me to get my looks. <laughs> sure. He's got his mother's looks. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it so much. Yeah. All right, we're well, now to 60 Main. Notice of intent, commercial parking lot, DEP file number 300-XXXXX. So we have a request for, a, a, a written request for continuation of this project to our next meeting, which is July 13th. Um, meeting starts at 6 o'clock. Um, he's still working on putting that information together, and DEP has not issued the file number and will not issue the file number until they get that additional information, so. So. I think we should note that you know how do i say this that they're holding us up <laughs> so themselves incomplete. Their, their filing is incomplete just so we know because we're, you yep. know there's a little verbiage going around right. information about information hasn't been provided to the board to move yeah. forward on this project did he give you any idea of when that information is scheduled to he asked about it yesterday. Yeah. Okay. So we've got a 705. We do. Just made up some time there. One Old Sturbridge Village Road, continuation of notice of intent, uh, tree removal and vista pruning, DDP file number 300-1162. <gasps> Good evening, folks. I'm Steve, doing? I'm Steve Feichel from Sherman Fredericks. And uh, we're back here with a proposal, abbreviated, I would say, revised proposal, uh, given the discussion at our last meeting. Uh, but I'd also like to give you, if I could, um, our arborist slash landscape person has uh, put together small pamphlet for us, and really what it does is it outlines um, a couple of things. Um, first thing, 
first thing is a, an inventory of the species of plants that will actually go in the garden. Thank you. Take the extra one. Thank you. Thank you. And the other second page actually shows photos of uh, how the garden is shaded. Um, so one of the, the revisions, if you will, of our proposal is we uh, spoke with a client and we spoke with uh, several other people about this, um, also in our Boston office. Um, Um, so what we, we plan to do is obviously... What office is that? Uh, we have two. Well, one actually in Boston. There's one in uh, Danvers and one in Marlboro. There's seven offices. But we have an environmental agent uh, in the Hancock uh, sister company. Through Sherman and Frederick in Hancock I, and Hancock yeah. Associates, yeah. yeah. So um, the things that we uh, had, had planned to discuss with you uh, last week is there seems to be... Uh, contentions about these uh, three very large species of oak and also a pine that is actually occurring right in the patio area. Um, we know and understand the importance of this and furthermore we understand your bylaws about cutting uh, in those areas. So what we would like to do in terms of uh, I would say working with the board in the town um, is to um, we've removed this tree from our proposal. This will remain, uh, as well as this tree here. Which tree is that? That one there that has the arrow to it still? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm hitting the, the microphone. It's this one right here. Yep. And this one right here. Yep. So those... those I think they just noted it wrong. They noted the, right. that one, yeah, to be removed. So we just have to... You got it, it to be removed. Yeah. And, and that's incorrect. It, it, it's actually... It should be... These two are the closest to... Um, the, the water's edge will remain. Um, but the, the real um, points of uh, contention is really here and here. These, these two or three trees shade the garden significantly. Uh, and we won't really be able to um, do the plantings that we need uh, in the, uh, the courtyard proper and receive the shade that we need in order to do the growth cycle. So what we're also offering in terms of... Uh, a replication, if you will, for taking these three trees is we would like to offer uh, planting of native uh, shrubs in this area right in here. And also, uh, we'd like to actually include in this area uh, native oaks or maples uh, that could occur and, and, and actually expand the canopy in this direction. So uh, I'd like uh, Reese to speak specifically to that. Um, but I just wanted to give you a general outline of what we would be willing to um, offer in terms of making this project, uh, let's say, more sustainable and more meeting the standard uh, of work in this area. Yeah, so um, thank you for the time again and, uh, and for your consideration for this project uh, because uh, this garden here, our goal is to basically improve the interpretive story and improve uh, the uh, story that we're trying to tell through the flower garden here and also introduce uh, key elements uh, to the garden, which is the fruit trees uh, that were grown for both production and ornamental uh, in our time period. Uh, so what we're really looking to do is introduce uh, eight new fruit trees uh, in the garden, four in the prop garden proper within the stone wall, and then four outside the stone wall to be pollinators uh, for this species. And this project does build off of a previous project uh, that we had before the board that was on the opposite end of the townhouse, uh, which is our orchard where we planted 78 trees, and here we've got eight other uh, fruit trees that are going to be added to the space, all part of kind of a strategic plan to kind of improve the intentionality of the landscape in the in the area to really work harder for the museum to tell uh, the story uh, that we're really trying to tell, which is, of course, uh, rural New England uh, in the 1830s. Um, and as you can see with uh, the, the pictures that, that are in front of you, uh, the vast majority of the, the 
uh, plants that were planted in this garden uh, do require uh, full sun or full sun and partial shade. Um, and uh, as you can see with the pictures uh, about the different sunlight patterns uh, in the garden, uh, we're just not getting the enough sun for the plant health. Uh, so what we're showing is a muted um, story, uh, unhealthy plants, and really doesn't uh, meet um, the standards that the museum really wants to hit uh, for the garden. And these trees, although uh, beautiful trees, uh, are really uh, you know, negatively impacting um, the story that we're trying to tell in this space. So with that, I, I think what we'd like to do um, is offer uh, any questions that the board might have. And I, I know previously um, we had some significant cutting, but we've abbreviated that now. And uh, but we were only asking for trees that definitely produce a shade in the garden and that would be um, counterproductive to what Reese and Old Sturbridge Village would be doing. Okay. So I got an opportunity to go over to Old Sturbridge Village on uh, <coughs> whatever, two days ago. And uh, I went at 1 o'clock. Um, and I had, happened to speak with one of the employees over oh. there who was at the Salem house, I think yep. that is. Yeah. Yep. So the, the sun pattern, I was just kind of asked about the sun pattern. Sure. So the river is on the east side. And he said, yeah, the sun goes across the garden the way you're describing it. And, and at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, the sun had passed and it was fairly well you know, lit in that area. So originally, so originally, I guess I didn't understand the plants that you already have there. You want to keep them there. You just they're going to do better with more sun. Okay. Um, as far as I'm concerned, that pine tree that's a no-brainer. You can mm -hmm. that's off my list. I, you've got enough property line along the waterfront. Um, you know those trees are really aesthetic. I, I can just tell you that. You know, I, I, I polled a few people independently sure. just to get their opinions. Your customers that come there to, sure. they may not know what your final goal is, but what they do use is a gazebo for shade. And sure. so just in uh, consideration that the people, your customers like yeah. those trees, you know. Um, but, you know, you've got a lot there. I, I think... Uh, I don't know how you want to look at it, but the more you could even improve the access to the riverfront in terms of just some of the scabby vegetation that's mm -hmm. behind those trees. Yeah. So the lower one on the right side, the oak, that's the one with the twin. Yeah, the split. twin. The twin split. Okay, yep. So that stays. Yep, that stays. And then the other one. Okay. This one stays. Correct. This one stays. Correct. That's a big... Big one. This one stays. No, no, that has to. Oh. That That's, one goes. That, was, that no one, that one, and the next one to the left that are one, the two one. big ones. Yeah, those two provide probably eighty-five percent of the shade. And the sun comes almost from that corner, I think. Yeah. Right across from the word gazebo. Yeah. So well, there's. Could we get some specificity around the additional native species to be determined? Uh, Mostly quantity um, and uh, also the size of what is planned to be planted. We know in your bylaws that it's usually a two to one ratio, but we're willing to uh, go to a bigger ratio that could be four to one of shrubs directly behind the wall. And then behind the arbor is really where we want to expand the trees themselves. So um, we would offer uh, a native species of either an ash or an oak uh, to plant behind there. And that, that will not cast sun onto the garden. Um, so we're not like uh, reinventing this and, and providing for the next person to come back to you or your board uh, where we'll have produced the same type of question. So, um, we want to certainly enhance it within uh, the riverfront because uh, we don't want to go outside of that. So it, it could be any amount, if you will. I would say probably uh, a, 
approximately four uh, in addition to the trees and the shrubs. So there would be a planting of shrubs behind the wall uh, along the river's edge and then behind the arbor uh, we could uh, plant uh, four species of an either an oak or an ash that would enhance uh, pretty much the uh, inventory that's currently there. I wouldn't include the ash right now, just with the emerald ash borer. So maybe oh, the, yeah. the oaks or oak and yeah, maple or oak trees. Yeah, and you know, just for nothing else, I think there wasn't any trees there 100 years, 170 years ago. Got a tree on around. So we're talking, is there room in, in behind the arbor for, were you saying four additional? Is that what you were talking about? It's mostly it's mostly um, brush uh, to that to, to that oh, side. So there's yeah, room. there's there's definitely room. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. it's junk. And do you think, Beck, if that is acceptable, that you could maybe give them some guidance as to where you think the most logical placement would be for determine for that on site? Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. I would just yeah. feel more comfortable if you're directing that uh, more from wetland protection than necessarily just aesthetics would you guys yes. be open yes. to that yeah, absolutely okay uh no other questions i just have a question comment you know we just really went over what the replacement plan is so instead of coming back with something if you're satisfied with what we just discussed maybe working towards a, a, a closure versus a continuation so we we're talking about four oaks, I guess, yep. right uh, behind the arbor. Well, I would, yeah. So I just say I would say um, no stump removal. Um, submit a revised plan showing the correct trees, and I can add that in there. But I'd, I'd ask for the I'd ask for the revised plan like within the next couple of days before we issue the permit, so then we can have the correct plan number date on there. And then it would be a four two one. Um, Replacement for shrubs, native suitable shrubs located um, below the the wall here shown on the plan where the trees are being removed. So if it's four to one, that's 12 shrubs in that area, 12, 12 shrubs, native suitable for that location. And then four oak trees um, located along the um, arbor side to be determined, all locations to be determined in the field with um, staff. Yeah, I, I'm just going to throw my two cents in and let it go. I, I feel that the cutting and sh and removal of the shading is frivolous. Um, you know, there isn't anybody on the planet that... I, I was just in Edgartown, and there was a beautiful Federalist in downtown with a flat area, and it's got a garden just like this, and they've got trees all the way around the perimeter. So I don't know how they can grow plants in in the middle and the village doesn't feel that it can. Now, I... Um, what is the orientation, Ed? Or what, I, is, what is the orientation with the sun with the guards that you're talking about? I can't answer the question. Okay. I, I can't even do it when I'm fishing down there. Oh, I'm I see. wondering what, <laughs> what direction I'm, I'm, uh, mm -hmm. I'm looking at. Um, my guess is that the, the building is where the sun comes up. I see. And then it comes around the, kind of the same way that, that mm -hmm. it does... Here, but I don't know for sure. I'd hate to. Yeah, I, I think, but my point is. Sure, go ahead. Um, we're we're in the age of global warming. Where, sure. Um, the formal gardens that they had in eight, what, what's the what, this Federalist? At what period is it actually? Yeah, so we're replicating the eighteen the later the latter part of the eighteen thirties. Yeah, this was eighteen sixty one. The one that, the garden that I was in. Yeah. Um, Victorian. And it's. It's beautiful, and the trees are all the way around it. I would say to you that from my childhood in Plymouth, these trees are not lodge trees, the ones that you're cutting down. They're not lodge trees. They're just lodge trees today. Um, and to, to talk about, um, you know, what you're going to plant, uh, it, it's for the next 15 years, it's meaningless in comparison with these trees. Now the pitch pine, um, I came through the fires and as a kid I learned to hate pitch pine all over the Cape wherever I went to hunt or whatever. And it's not, it's not indigenous, it wouldn't be in that garden. 
I don't know how it got there. It's probably the best looking one I've ever seen. <laughs> it's a good look. It's Very unfortunately, uh, our curators do not like how close it is to the house. No, I don't. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not arguing that trade. Yeah. But my, I'm disappointed in the others and in the yeah. plan. So, I just thought I'd let you know that. Yeah, and I do want to say I did look. You know, is there a way to cut back? Because that one oak is really branchy. Yeah. You know, the one right behind the gazebo and. Once you start lobbing, it don't look like heck anyway. You know, so. yeah. um, do you have a motion? You said you wanted to close the public. Anybody in the audience to speak? Do you have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second? You're making the motion to? Yeah. yeah. I'll second the motion to close the public hearing. All right, any discussion? Any none? All in favor? Eric Gaspar in favor. Edwin Glass in favor. Roy Bishop in favor. Ed Goodwin in favor. With regard to the project at One Old Sturbridge Village Road, DEP file number 300-1162, I'd like to make a motion to approve the project uh, with the uh, with the notes provided by the agent, with the uh, replanting plan discussed on site and with the condition that the revised plan be provided to staff prior to issuance of the permit. You have a second? Second the motion. All right. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor. Eric Gaspar in favor. Ted Winglass in favor. Lord Bishop in favor. Ed Goodwin not in favor. All right. Got it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, members of the board. Oh, no, no, it's quite a red thing. Well, at least we get two, 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 two days, do you think? Uh, what would you, what do you oh, think? Oh, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll draft it probably Monday or Tuesday. So just let me know. And any notes that you think you want to add to the, the plan, we can certainly do that. Okay, yep. I think it'd be fine if you make that one revision and then we'll add the conditions in there. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. We're now at 715, 68 Paradise Lane, continue notice of intent, raise and rebuild of a lakefront cottage, DEP file number 311.55. Okay. Calvin, sorry I didn't recognize you when you came in. There's, a, there's another mic back there at that table, so if you want to pull up a chair and sit there since we just got a small table here, or unless Mr. Buchanan wanted to come up. Yeah, whatever. So just um, so continuation, um, since then we've had the peer review report came in, which you were provided. We provided to the applicant representative. Um, they also had a response to that that we sent out to you to take a look at. So I think it, um, keep the discussion moving forward here. Maybe the best way would just um, allow Calvin here from ESI to go over the peer review report, see if the board has any questions at that time, and then allow Scott to go over the information that he submitted, um, and if you have any questions at that time, and then we can provide some comments. Sounds good. All right. All right. Scott. Or Calvin. Right. Yeah. Testing one, two, three. Test. <clears throat> so um, you, you've seen the, the report. Um, it basically outlines that um, there's a well on the property that's been leaking consist consistently for a long enough period of time to create um, an environment where obligate plants and wetland plants um, are dominant, um, as well as and so that's on the left-hand side of that picture. If you got to zoom in a little bit. Oh, we, yeah, we can give a point. To... Give that to him. Yeah, I can show it. It's right there. So there's the well. Yeah. Could you give that to him so that he can? Oh. Thank you. All right. There we go. So yeah, that's the well. Um, it flows down this way um, and merges with the, uh, the edge of the yard there. Um, and on this side, there's a, a metal, uh, corrugated metal pipe right here and a ditch on this side of the road. Um, the water would flow through that pipe and down this way when we uh, visited last month. Mm -hmm. That area was full of um, jewel weed uh, and some other wetland plants. 
Um, and it would flow down the side there towards the uh, big Allen pond. Um, there's, there's a good amount of larger trees in that area as well that are uh, not as, they're not wetland indicators per se. Um, I'd say it's more of a mix of larger trees in that area. You're talking down this side here? Yes. Now, is this your delineation for the wetland? Um, that is ecotext delineation with flags that we had added. So that peninsula sticking up is what we had added that goes around the well. You can see that the, the so we've got yeah. A, 4, A, B, C, all the ones, the letters were the added ones. So that were your reference in that you added that? They added it. Right. But we had added the, yes, we had added the flags. They had, they had added them on the ground and then um, McClure engineer picked them up. So this was included with, the, with Scott's report. So those flags are survey located, shown on the plan, and plan modified to address that. Now, is, is this a spring or is this a well? It's a well. It's a well. It's a well that's been flowing long enough to, uh, to be considered a spring, I think. Um, it, it's a well that was dug. I, I'm speaking with him. I, uh, it, it's a man-made spring. I know the history of the property. He it doesn't. It, it, You'll get your turn. It is a man-made structure. Um, but yes, it would be a well. Yeah. So that if, if we pulled that collar out of there and filled it, what would happen? I couldn't quite say. Um, the whole side of the mountain, Mount Dan right there, uh, we walked on the other side of the road a little bit, looked up into the, the woods, and there were patches of uh, springs poking up throughout that area. Okay. Um, and the amount of fill in the backyard um, between the house and the pond down here um, it, it's deep enough to be uh, to indicate that the wetland was once much larger than it is now. Um, so when the house was put in there, they filled in some stuff, but that was back before the Wetland Protection Act. Yeah. Um, but as to what would happen if that well is removed, um, I couldn't really say. But I, I would think that there would be a potential wet area somewhere near there. Anything else? Um, no, I don't have anything else. All right. See the pointer for sure. Does the board have any other any questions? I mean, I know you guys read the whole report. He doesn't need to go through the so, whole thing. So, uh, well, I'm just trying. Do we have a side by side of kind of where the where Scott's original oh, if, if you don't was. mind I can versus it probably follows the tree line here right right down yeah well, there's goes, a, uh, a visual learner so these are the these are the flags so a8 a7 a6 yep these are the revised flags a here original. so we we'll connect from a6 Perfect. roughly along this tree line I think do you want the hard copy from the last plan set yeah, I can, I can help with that. Side, is it online, it if I found it? it? Would stop oh, no. here, I can look at it, yeah. And that was added. Well, let's make sure I got the right one. Uh, okay. And based off of kind of the, the relining of, of the boundary, there were some calculations on the original plan of impact uh, within the 50 foot and within even the 25 foot with those yeah right here so this buffer zone impact do we have the new calculations based off of the new uh, there, is, there is a yeah there is a table on here but I don't know if they we revised that uh, yeah those are it looks like it was changed those are zeroed out so that seems unlikely, right? Because, or, or, di or did the plan change? The plan changed. Oh, okay. I'll go through the, if you want, I'll right. go through yeah, the plan yeah. changes. Okay, sure. 
So again, do you want to zoom back out a little bit or yeah, move okay. around? Is that better? So again, it was clearly found. You've got this well, and as you go from this well down towards the well, and they found, you know, like groundwater at two inches, six inches, and ten inches with sandy soils as you move down through here. So based upon that, it's unquestionably that water's, you know, nobody's been in this house for a couple of years, so water's spilling out, coming down here. I think it's, it's not really wetland hydrology, it's just leaking of the well. The other thing is they're saying that the ditch, that roadside ditch here is an intermittent stream. You know, it doesn't drain a wetland. It's literally a ditch that starts right sh shy of the turnaround and extends back to this pipe. So it doesn't drain a wetland. There's, there is a wetland over here that flows through this pipe. That unquestionably is an intermittent stream and continues flowing. So we disagree with the wetland boundary. Nevertheless, we've revised the project. We've eliminated, there was, if you recall, there was a catch basin here, a swale. Um, we had some revisions to the, the wetland boundary down here to address the water that was getting in behind the stairs that the commission approved. We've taken that completely off the table. So what we've done is tightened up this project, added an erosion control barrier to keep this, the project outside the wetlands with the exception of a minor little impact here just to remove this, there's a short retaining wall. So essentially just remove those boulders is the only, the only impact. So we've got an erosion control barrier that comes around like this, keeps away from the wetlands here and the wetlands that were delineated over here. And, you know, essentially truncates that project, shrinks it down so it's, it's even more narrow and, and provides less grading around that house. We did add, if you can scroll up, show us here. So because that deep sump catch basin was removed, they've added a, um, uh, what's the word for this? The um, rain guardian. Rain guardian turret right here. Mm -hmm. So water that comes off the road will go into that, provide some treatment before it's discharged to the wetland. Well, an area that was delineated over here. Um, other than that, essentially this project remains the well. remains the same. So the well will be moved. You know, it's currently here. They'll drill a new well here and provide service coming back this way. If you look here, this is where the original house was. Um, they pulled that back to make sure that it meets the 50-foot lake setback. So we've gone through um, the requirements for um, local lake front lots, um, which if we go through kind of the details, so you require mitigation, two-to-one mitigation, which again, we've, we've pulled that back and completely eliminated. Um, Minimize disturbance. We've completely minimized disturbance. You know, it's all within existing uh, maintained lawn or landscaping. Um, address sediment and erosion control. We've got an erosion control barrier. Road runoff will go through here, so we're dealing with sediment before any of that water reaches the wetland or the lake. Um, we've, again, eliminated with the exception, just pulling out a couple of these boulders here, we've eliminated all wetland impacts. Um, we've added the additional structures, which is the replacement structure. We've put that as far from the lake as possible. We've got to actually to file with ZBA because it's within the zoning setback is right here. So it encroaches into that setback. Very similar to the house that was approved next door. So that's still pending, but we're, we're seeking a variance to, to move that house. Um, and then walkways and pathways must be uh, pervious so we've got you know the actually the entire driveway will be pervious um, material so those are the requirements for small lakefront lots under the local bylaw um, again I went through the changes the revisions to the plan I'd be happy to answer questions so help me understand like on the original plan we had th there was a deep V for another 25 foot local bbw buffer that has been removed from this plan there was the one at the top which is there and then there was another one that went right through the center of the house right which i expected would still be there 
um, and be even harder to, to work within given the new wetland. That, could, um, that one right there. That moved there because essentially this was oh, where the top five. of this wetland was. But that was already there. So they added this. This was added, which revised that line. And then on this side, the wetland boundary more or less kind of followed this tree line, which now it goes up and circles around this well. Which right, but don't which we need to see that. the buffer? That is it, uh, the uh, blue uh, one. On top, on that's, top of that? That's what it's all within right 25 feet, so you're not going to see the line there for yeah. both sides. The whole okay, project. right. So but, uh, I guess, well, and that's maybe that's where my, my question about the calculations comes into play, right? Because now it's all within 25 feet, so to zero it out, is it, it, it can you can you scroll up to the calculations i just need to okay so there's nothing within 50 it's all in the okay so, so that's well, what i need to see did they break well, down no, the lake, lake and then they break no, down the bbw's right. separate yeah no because we went from 685 square feet that's been revised to 840 pervious went was going from 671 to 1390, and that's existing. Yep. The proposed now is go going from 774 to 1430 and 668. Um, it'd probably be easier versus... to see it as one table, 0 to 25, 0 to 50, instead of breaking it down lake and BVW. I think that's maybe where the confusion is coming in. I think well, that would probably I, be easier. Well, my simplistic brain just saw zero and zero on the 25 to 50 and said that's can't be right that can't be less, right less than but one that's right yeah exactly but there isn't between anything between 25 and 50 because now it's all between zero and 25 accurate no i think you're i think if you i think what's where's this, this pointer so if you eliminate the buffer zone associated with the lake, the rest of it focus on, on the, the work, really the work area. Because if you scroll down, I think there's almost there's very little work within that the 25 foot lake buffer, if, if at all. Keep scrolling down. Yeah. So the only yeah, no, I'm, uh, I don't want to say I'm not concerned that. about the lake. Uh, obviously I am, but I, I'm not focusing on that. I'm focusing on um the the bvw buffer and by my math if we scroll back up 774 plus 656 is 1430 right so that that has stayed consistent but it's just all within the 25 foot no touch right right Okay. Um, uh, so just to add to, in the report too, was included uh, a tree removal assessment by Joe Kowalski. Um, yeah, we'll get to that in a minute. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, you know, that's fine. I just didn't. Question on the, on the rain guardian turret. Is there a specific size or capacity mentioned on that? Or? There's a detail on, this, on the next sheet. So if you look, water flows in into this system. It's got a I know they work. They're just different, you know, sizes. And there's uh, uh, rain bunkers, and it's a little bit different system, but essentially the same. Is this working? I think it's a good improvement yeah. for that part of your project. Yeah, because there's a lot of water that runs off that. Yeah. I think all the water that comes down that that street ends up going straight towards his front door as opposed to going on it side. doesn't the water that comes down on paradise does not go into if you if you move up it, it does not like go into that drain that is on the other side of the road the, the right. side of the road yeah. because it's the road is lower pitched the wrong it's way. pitched the wrong way so what happens is it comes down and then it just sheets off the road directly onto the property the actual 
uh, ditch that he talked about as, 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 as new wetland actually never runs. It never, even, so like two days ago, we had one, like one inch of rain in like 20 minutes. And it's still that, that ditch on the yeah. right side right still doesn't run. What happens is the water comes down Paradise yeah. and just sheets right across. Right in here. So that, that rain thing is actually, you know, really so it, important. Yeah, so what'll happen is it, it'll be caught here instead of flowing straight towards the house. It'll be caught here, treated, and then pushed this way into this, this area. That's a pretty neat concept. Yeah, I think it is too. I think we should have McClure maybe provide a little feedback because we know there's high ground water here to make sure that it, it will function correctly. I don't know enough about it, so that it's might be extremely shallow if you go to the detail. Yeah, they're really not that deep. No, not at all. What happens when the material fills up in there? Yeah, so that's foot there. Ten inches. And ten inches. Yeah. And it's Eight it's inches. on it's in fill, so it'll be a Excuse me, you had a... Well, I mean, it is, it, that's designed to catch silt and sand and stuff, right? Well, it yeah. must fill up. But how does it work? At it's, that? Got a, it's got like a baffle, I think, so if it fills up, it filters through, Allows a catch bit of that, material to and if you get a heavy flow, it can go and spill over and continue on. Yeah, it's like a... I guess it's equivalent to like oh, a, a, tank. a catch basin that's got it's a sump. Like the road is now. Except there's no, you know, Except, yeah, there's no, to nothing yes. to slow it down and yeah. nothing to filter it. Yeah. What's the square footage of the existing cottage? Um, it's about um, um, 20 by 38, something like that. Does that include the porch? Yes. What's... What's a proposed? Proposed, can we go up? I think it's listed on there. It's less than 15%, I know that. So 750 square feet. Actually, that's habitable floor. Is, it, is there new square footage? Well, there's it says first floor here. What's, I don't know what TOC yeah. is. That's but top of concrete. And then so those the elevations. Habitable floor area for the existing is 620 square feet ed and we're going to 2400 square feet and then right you got to add yep. the depth well, that's that's two stories two two yeah. yeah i admit it okay. right yeah yep i do have another question when so it's that's my on turn. The, it's pretty it's pretty are you, it's, are you talking on a single on a single 760 to 2400 no 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 it's half of the 20. 760 to, yeah, in terms of, our, if you're asking foot, like footprint, I think it's 1200. like 700 to 1300 or 680 to 1300 yeah. footprint. Yep. So I got 760 by what you gave me. Right. I, I, think, I think he pointed out the actual number, but it's, it's roughly in the sevens to eights up to in the 12s to the 13s. With this, it's it's smaller than you know most of the houses in the neighborhood. Yeah, you can look at, you know, for an example. Why can't I see this? This is the house next door, which is probably twice the size. I don't want to get into a house next door conversation. I, I think the, the, the you can say to us um, the reason we can expand it by this amount and not be grandfathered is. I mean, if you're looking for a grandfathered lot, you're going to get 760. Well, there's specific requirements for lakefront lots, small well, lakefront lots that don't, there's no requirement, there's no size threshold for that requirement under the local bylaw. So Scott, this is a lakefront lot, but it also has BBW on both sides, which I think is what the difference yeah. is. Most of the time, you're working with just the lake edge, yep. and not wetlands on all, all three to four sides, I guess. No, it's quite unique that, you know. All right. Do you want to go over the other proposal well, that was included in here? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so there's, I don't know if it's easier to just 
show it to you on the... So there's some dead trees. Up in that area of the site. Um, I think he's talking, she's talking about the about, second proposal. Oh, the second proposal. Yeah, so we yeah. provide an alternative. Um, essentially, it's kind of overlaid. So, I, I, I just want to... And so the... If we build on the existing footprint, it's obviously fairly small, but it's the same distance from the wetland. And I mean, we're not, the only way we're going is back. So we're not encroaching on the, encroaching on the wetland. We're just trying to move back. And you're so. Not encroaching on this wetland, you're not encroaching on this wetland. That's correct. We're just trying to move back both on this one and on, on the original um, um, plan. So we're just trying, so on the original plan, we tried to move the entire house back beyond the 50-foot line. This one, um, because Mr. Gaspar asked for alternative last time, um, I, so we just said, okay, we'll just leave the house where it is, but just sort of extend it back a little bit. And that's, that's what this is in, in opening a little bit on, on, on the right side which is, is towards the area that isn't in, like, the wetland. So, you know, either one, we're, you know, we're, we're trying to just move back towards the street and not encroach on the wetland. This one obviously stays in the footprint towards the lake. The other one actually moves back. Yep. Well, I think this isn't the... The end of the first house here. No. Well. Oh, no. This. That this, line. No. This. I think that's the, uh, what is the it? porch in the back, isn't it? Yeah. Oh. But I, you just can't see. It looks like the house ends there. I don't know if there's something. It does. It, it doesn't. It, it doesn't. It goes Rebecca. Goes here. That goes, house in the. Goes, that's part of the house. The existing the house. house. Yeah. The part in. The, yeah. According to this plan, Beck, that's accurate. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, the lower part is the exact footprint of the house. Do, do you have the plan for the tree cutting? Yes, it's included in here. Yep. Yep. Why don't we go to that? You want to go to that now? Can I just, real quick before we move off, can you just sure. go up and show me the calcs up top? Okay, thank you. So what happens to the existing well? It will be abandoned in accordance with DEP and Board of Health regulations. I mean, obviously, it would need to be uh, decommissioned, whatever that is. It's first of all, it's broken in the front, so it's. I think it's a it's a danger because there's an opening like, like where the cap, the, the part around it is broken in the front. And it's cracked all the way down, which is where the water in the front, which is where the water comes out. Doesn't that create another? Wetland? Well, well, it's already the being shown is, as one. Yeah. The wetland line is including that area now. Okay. All right, so just so you're oriented, it's the opposite way now. So this is Big Allen Lake up here. Um, this is the line. This is if we were looking down on the property. This is mm -hmm. the property line. Um, uh, Mr. Buchanan's current house is over here. And that's the stone wall. This is the uh, kind of forested triangle here and this is like the open areas I think what he was trying yeah. to show yeah so, the yeah, house so over there. red is trees to be removed so I kind of yeah. tallied it because he didn't put a tally in it so it looks like it, there's 26 trees and saplings to propose to be removed in the wetland and then a couple additional bushes so I think it was there was four ash saplings six unnamed saplings nine ash trees seven hemlocks two blueberries yeah I mean they're yep. I mean, they're all dead or dying. Yeah, the hemlocks are in real rough shape over here, and the ashes, I think, are just dead. The only thing I'd, I'd just add, though, too, is that, well, one, I think these get everything on one plan, get it picked up and put it on the McClure plan. It's just that property line falls somewhere around here. I was saying that when Joe oh, came the in. the property line is right here. No, 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 I mean by the road. So here's Paradise Lane. I think we just got to make sure we're approving work only on the subject parcel. 
the, the road is yeah. part of the property across the street. So no, it's no, it would be that it would be halfway because it's a private road. So the I don't think so. I, I'm just I'm just saying my experience with the private roads, like some of them, some of them, some roads that have been either abandoned or decommissioned, the property lines for the adjacent properties then go to the middle. Um, but here, the property line, it, it shows that the Paradise Lane is on the opposite parcel. What about the, per the McClure plan. Yeah, the McClure plan. Bring that back. Yeah, he up just shows. The, I'm just saying. saying he just shows the property line somewhere different. So I just make sure we got. We can touch that. base with the exactly. The, yeah, let's just yeah, make sure. Right. I just wanted to say we got to make sure we're approving stuff not on someone else's property without their permission. Yeah. So. So there's a question on where the property line is with the road. That's what you're telling me, right? Right. The McClure plan shows the property line south of the road. I think it's like 10 feet. I was, when Joe came in, I was showing him that and measuring that. So I just, that's just from what I observed on there. So I think I'm not sure if the commission has any feedback on these options that they presented, but I think it would probably, especially because we've got the new tree removals, you know, the commission wants to take a look at the site again with all of this information, but I think it would be useful if you have comments at this time to provide it to them. They've got these two options here. I mean, I would just say, you know, the, the first option with the original footprint of the house, I, you know, if you're putting a foundation in there, I'm just not sure how you can get the foundation in with the limited work line so close. Usually you have to dig out around those to some degree, um, even if it's not a full foundation. That's my experience being on these project sites. Um, I just don't see how that, that could happen. Um, I'm not sure if McClure can provide some additional detail on that because I just don't know that that's a reasonable limited work line. Um, I think that it really if we can go back to the plan, I can explain. So any of the excavation will have to be done, essentially, because it's a tight lot, narrow lot, they'll have to start the excavation on the lake side and work their way back. Um, McClure has put together, I think on the plan, there's a soil stockpile area. Um, you know, it's, it's not a full foundation. It's a crawl space, so there's a very limited amount of uh, grading and excavation work required. Have you considered pillars? We have. We looked into it. We spoke with the architect about it. The problem with them is that they're they're temporary in the fact that they're only warranted for 15 years, and after that, you know, all bets are off. And the problem here is, picture spending all that money, build that house, put it on piers. Everybody knows that there's a high wolf groundwater table. You know the the pillars. So you can't get out. somebody to put them in and guarantee them for more than fifteen years. No. That that's correct. And then you know, if you got an issue in fifteen years, it's going to be a monumental undertaking to try and go in. You're going to have to jack up the house, excavate a foundation. Whereas this, where you're tearing out the house, I think it's just a permanent solution to go in, put a full foundation, especially with you know, groundwater issues and high groundwater. Just do it, address it in one fell swoop, and, and be done with it. All right. Well, can I ask one more question? I'm, sure. I'm sorry. I forgot your name. Calvin. Calvin. Um, you had made reference in your peer review uh, of talking about the 105 feet of replication. And that wasn't a tr true rec a replication, in your opinion, or by the standard or whatever. Could you expand upon that just so I have some context around that? Yeah, um, when I was reading through the report and looking at the plan at the same time, I noticed that the replication and um, restoration area numbers changed a little bit and didn't always add up to the same amount. Um, and replication and restoration very, are very similar, but they were somewhat used um, mistakenly one for another at some points. Yeah, what happened was when I was writing the report, I read something. It's, I should have put my glasses on. But I read it as, I thought it said 50. I think I'd, I thought it said 50, but it was actually 30 or vice versa. So that's what that, the, it was just oh, a right. difference I between. I visited a site today, so. It was the difference between <laughs> what I had seen on the site and, and the, uh, so the, plan, so the plans the are accurate. was one thing that, and that's the 30 that we're talking about right down there in the lower right-hand corner, right next to yeah and all that comment house. All, right. all that commentary was regarding that replication area and the work that was proposed here which has been completely taken off the table so it's irrelevant at this point what would be the the plan for the wetland in the future moving forward with either one of these 
proposals that's in the lawn. Leave them as as lawn and and maintain. You don't them. think that a good mitigation could be for this project to res restore those, do some plantings, and like I said, it's tight. It's, it's been lawn for seventy five years. Both the act and the, the local bylaw allow um, lawns to be maintained. All right, you're looking for mitigation now for a project that doesn't meet the standards. So I, I would see that as a good option. Um, as something maybe yeah. for consideration um, to help find a, a solution to permitting something at this this site. I think we're all ears in this fact. You know, it's this is the seventh meeting we've been here for. So, you know, I mean, if, if you want and to we had we've had little to no feedback. So it's it's been a bit frustrating. I, I don't think that that's I fair. Think getting Scott, feedback. You know, I mean, this is a tough site. We talked about. You know me. I'm not trying to hassle anybody. I'm just oh, you yeah. know, and 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 I like I like math. I like data. I like consistency, um, and uh, and and you know I like straightforward. And you know, there's I got confused around some some of the stuff in there. It's just you know what is being asked for is a grand leap forward, and the concessions that are being given aren't necessarily in, in alignment. And I understand what we're trying, what you're trying to do here. I empathize with the, uh, Mr. Buchanan. I do, right? But at the same time, this this piece of property is is very very challenging. And and though the other plan for me, I feel more comfortable with the other plan, right? Because I think it, it's uh, it's it's uh, more in line with. Um, so you prefer this existing one? conditions you know I know we're saying we're not trying to encroach upon the wetlands but you know I mean that's a, I don't expect Mr. McKinnon to, to say that any differently but Scott you know that you know we're encroaching within that buffer zone which is there intended to kind of protect that space right so that's what the buffer zones are there and it's still all within the 25 foot and we have these 25 foot no touch uh, policies and, and, and guidances in place for a reason so I don't it's it's not that we're not looking to give you any guidance it's that you know we've I've been pretty consistent that I didn't like that other design this one favors my eye a little bit more and now we're starting to to at least for me and I'm only one of five votes right to, to get a little bit closer to something that I can start to wrap my head around with some right. mitigation options yeah right okay. you know so I I, I I know, I know you're frustrated. You've been here seven times. I get that Mr. Buchanan would be frustrated, but I, I just want to call you on that. I don't think it's fair to say we haven't provided any guidance. It, it, I think it's more appropriate to say we haven't been given anything that seems like a we're we're trying to work together towards a resolution. And I, I think we're both sitting here, you know, looking for anything that we can do to move this forward, this project forward. So if if this is what the commission prefers we can move forward with with you know designing this and kind of adding the stormwater features and and that sort of thing yeah so what do you want in the you know on the uh, on the lawn area that's wet you know that we originally were going to you know, I, I get confused you know replication versus restoration or whatever but this wet that's area right down area. here what yeah. I mean, what do you want? I mean, I'm happy to, you know, like I put out a rain garden, you know, you know, so it drains drains through a swale, you know. I mean, I'm I'm I make I'm, some recommendations. I'm planting a little bit, yeah. Stuff. I mean, I, I guess right. You still have to show a mitigation here, especially because you will be getting a bigger footprint here too. I would say I that mitigation. the wetland could be restored, huh. right? And I would, you know, have it be a no disturb area, right? There's still going to be areas of being able to walk around and use the area. Um, wait, wait, I, I just want to say something, but the wetland be restored. It, it never was. Well, I mean, I it's always been a lawn. It was wet because of the well. It was never a. It was never a wetland like with plants growing out of it it was a well that leaked onto the lawn and there's if you're looking for guidance no i'm just i'm, I'm at, i was guidance? asking her a question are you looking for guidance yes then listen well i, I 
I, I didn't understand what she was um, yeah, I would just saying. say you could add add some plantings in here, enhance that. Um, that would be beneficial for resource area. So that way it's not mowed, it's an undisturbed area, um, which actually would probably help absorb, you know, some of the water in that area a little bit better too with some additional vegetation. Um, I would recommend that on this side too. Um, you know, in the regulations, sometimes there's some permanent kind of bounds that are put there, so that way the areas aren't disturbed in the future. Some split roll fences have been used, some different types of bounds. It's something the commission could consider. Yeah. Um, I like the idea of working with somehow treating the road runoff here. But let's just make sure whatever it is they're proposing is something that will work with the high groundwater here. I think that will be beneficial. The proposal that was on the previous yeah. plan, yeah. if they yep. replicated that onto this, do you think that that's sufficient? Well, I don't know enough about that that system and how it would work. You know, I think we just need to get a little guidance on it. We can work work with our peer reviewers here on some guidance too with that. But just to show that that's going to work here because we do have that high ground water here. You know, if you put that in that water, what's going to happen? So let's just make sure we've got I, I, something I, good. But it could be revised to be something different. Yeah, I'd like to say if you walk the property back, you know, it's like there's it's not wet at all on that side. There's no high ground water on on that side. Okay. It's yeah, on the just, left, and it's it's yeah, it's especially saying, down, down. It's especially down on the yeah, right. I mean, it could that's, be, that's really wet down there. If it's 18 inches here and it's sitting in 18 inches, then that could be problematic for that structure. I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm just saying let's right. make sure we got the, the information um, available for that um, roof ru roof runoff infiltration. Um, we've looked at things about that before. If it's you can't get it in the ground here, maybe you could um, create something to help. You know filter that, treat it before it goes off towards the wetlands, come up with something creative um, for that. Um, the driveway, not sure what the proposal would be for that. Would it be the same thing on the previous plan? But I would make sure it's something that's not fully impervious. Um, the pavers with that substrate under it that helps you know, infiltrate it, that would be probably a good option here, I, I would imagine. Um, but there's other options. Um, I think the size, I would, size needs to be reduced. We're, we're talking a seven, 760 foot square foot house, and we're, and we're, you know, pushing toward doubling that. I think you should come back on the size, more in line with the 760. I think you should look at tiers. Um, they work all over the place. Um, it's ama it's amazing to me that you couldn't find anybody that could put um, piers in there, because that would be a big help to. Um, Protecting the lake by putting it on piers. Um, it, it, I, it, you know. It's a complete. I, it would. It would it's, I it's losing my money to do it on piers. I I can't do so it. So it's on about piers. money, huh? Well, no, I don't understand what it, how, it's, it, how well, it, it hinders the lake. What? How does a pier hinder to cause damage? Yeah, a lot lake? less impact by putting in in piers. But then you'll have. Uh, I'm not going to have an argument here. Okay, you wanted to hear. You said you guys weren't getting any anything. I'm trying to have a conversation. And, you, and you're not. You you have an, a one-sided listening experience. You're all listening to yourself. Uh, try try and look at it with peers. Try and look at it in the size that it is. Try and look at it as far back as you can, try, and then try and protect the wetland as much as you can. That would be a viable way to go. From my point of view and i think that's what we've been doing we went through numerous iterations of how to configure this on this lot to try and get the shape working with the architect getting the shape to be able that it's a functional functional house but also trying to meet setbacks and and those things so it's on the you, you may come in and you may think that we're just showing you two plans but we've gone through 15 different configurations to try and come up okay. with a, a decent right. plan anybody else well i mean it, from my point of view it's this is the first time i've seen the different uh wetland boundary where yeah. we have the right from the peer review it's yeah. the first time i've seen it yeah me too and i mean that does complicate things if you went to the old one you went from a4 to a5 to a6 okay that that doesn't look too bad but with the the peer review and you look at the way it's depicted now it does create a it makes the lot more difficult and especially with the basement and putting in the foundation and the setback on the original plan you're right up against the hairy edge of it 
and you like know, I said, there's, so there's wetlands on both sides. So there's, right. you know, the existing house is within feet of it. So, you know, the existing conditions are that tight. So, right, but it's not. There's no full foundation there. Like digging that we're foundation not, we're not, is. We're not proposing a full foundation. Well, it's simply a crawl space. So you got a concrete you gotta, slab to prevent any moisture from getting up into the house. But there's still excavation that's required to do that. Right. And then, do you need to do a perimeter drain with that? as well i think the last yeah plan. the plan's got a perimeter drain on that and it's less than three feet and the other uh feet. thing we should do there becky what is the distance three feet three feet. mark the trees that we want to cut there should be a marking program to evaluate it to go, go so look at can, it you know so mark the trees that you want cut and anything you want cut um and we can take a look at it for, uh, I don't know that we're going to get be any more productive with this conversation. But for me, if if, if you're going to bring back a revised plan for me, I would want to see it more along those lines. And to I think it was your point, Ed. I think we need to have everything on one plan, yeah. uh, and and get on site with with where the marked trees are um, to know which ones are coming out and all that stuff. I think that would go a long way. But I, I this is an improvement. Right, you know, I'm, I, I'm, and this I is good feedback. Think, I don't want you to think that this isn't approved. But if we come back with that original plan, I'm very uncomfortable with that original plan. I don't think I've changed my opinion on that since day one, and I've been pretty consistent looking for an alternative. This is an alternative, right? That gets us closer. I don't know if it gets yeah. us all the way, but it gets us closer, right? Okay. So, um, uh, but we need to, we need to more formalize that and make sure you're calling out where the mitigations are quantify the mitigations so we can make a justifiable variance if if we deem that it makes sense in the net and, and it's a net positive to the lake and to the wetland i think it'd be useful too as part of the alternative analysis to get something that demonstrates that you can't do some type of um, peer piling as an option here um, because right you, you, go along the coast, all the houses are on them. I, and I don't think they're replacing them every 15 years. So there might be different options that are out there that might um, help sway them to allow you to put it closer to this. I, I've talked saying, to my architect. I, I, I you know, I, how about if we come back next time with, you know, uh, a plan, we'll take into account, you know, all the ideas that yeah. everybody mentioned. Um, and, you know, like collectively try to come up with the best thing that works for us and and for the commission um, including additional restoration replication whatever the word is is um, and you know i on, on the trees you know i'm not in, you know, there's a couple that are absolutely 100 percent dead that i worry about falling on the house like the rest like joe says are going to die and you know I don't want to have to do it two times, you know, you know. I think the, this the year, purpose year, is I don't to really get them care. on the same plan. I right, identify right. them. So, so I, the board you can come out them. and take a look at, at the trees. Yeah. You know, the important thing is, you know, there's a, you know, he said there's a very unusual stand of linden trees. Um, it's highly unusual and very rare, and he li he'd like to preserve those that are right in the middle of that um, area. And we're spending a lot of money. Um, on the trees that are on our property line, injecting them to try to like to save all the top forest that is on our land. Um, so I, it's it's I, I, yeah. All I really care about is the dead trees, but the completely dead trees. But Joe says there's you know a bunch that need to come out. You guys can take right. a look at yeah, that. Yeah, and and he we'll does that on the plan. And yeah. Uh, yeah, one more question. You know, I think Eric's indicated that this is his preference, but before we start going on a fishing expedition can we kind of get some feedback from other members because i don't want to come back and have the next the, the next three say well i like the other plan better well, if we i could. just was gonna get a chance to speak so <laughs> in general i like this design better than the previous one okay. i like the improved storm water management i like the mitigation that becky's brought up so that's you're moving in the right direction. On the plan. That's not depicted on this plan. Well, I, no, all of that needs to be integrated into the right. plan. But. We would do all the restoration and replication that's on the other plan. 
and so, and more if 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 you think it's necessary. So I would just say just to oh, make well, sure. you could just tilt that a little. <laughs> yeah, and move it away from this. If, if Roy's concerned, I mean, I could you know, the left, I could mean, you can massage that a little I, bit it, to it, see if we could line it up like right in the middle. I I, yeah. I, I was trying on, on this plan. I was trying to stay within the same footprint, which is which is which is this right here. So this is this is the existing footprint of the house. So we just added a little bit here and a little bit here. If 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 it would be better like to tip it away from this, I'd be happy to do that. But it would be moving it, you know, inside the fifty foot line. I, so I'm, I'm I'm happy to do I'm not an architect or an engineer. I well, just I'm just suggesting no, I, that I, I was just trying for, to, for I was Roy's. just trying to I was I, I was trying to Build over the same build over footprint. the same footprint and, and then move back away from the wetlands to add a little bit more. If if you if you think it would be better tipped like just a little bit because it comes closer to this, because this really you know, there's lots of you know like whether we're not like we agree with I don't want to get you reviewer, this is much much drier than this is, regardless. Okay, so if you move it over here, it definitely is a drier area. Do you agree with that statement, Kel? Yeah, there's um, significantly less water on the right hand side of the plan than on the left hand side. So if we were to air and make accommodations, as as a professional, you would say we would want to air more to the right side than to the left. That's correct. Right. Yeah, that I'm makes ask for a continuation. Can, I, can we just add one more thing? In, in reviewing this plan and showing it to the Board of Health Department, I just, can you um, depict where the well is in relation to the wetlands and make sure that they would approve that location before we put that in the final? Because um, I couldn't tell how many feet it was, but I don't know if that would meet their standards. Yeah. It's, I don't think there's any setbacks for wells. Either. 25. Uh, what, yeah, there's a 25 foot from the wetlands and I think 15 feet from a property Oh, is that Board of Health? Board of yeah. Health. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Yeah. That's online. Can you go back to the... Uh... So I'm not exactly sure what it is, but I just want to make sure. You don't have to go back again and change that. Just make a note and check on it. Put it more in the middle. You know, I have to move it over a little. The well right yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's right next to the wetlands, so that's... So they wouldn't approve that. I don't if you think have they an alternative would, option, yeah. So. Just some advice. Yeah. I would just want to add two things. Good one, catch, one, it would be important, I think, for the commission to have a written alternative analysis showing that they've reviewed and looked at pilings, piers are not an option, and other kind of things they've looked at. Um, so that way, if you do approve this and the next person comes in, you can show that you have fully went through an alternative analysis process for that. Um, I think that's important. I think this project would be much better on one of those structures, but I can't say that you would have to do that. I would just think it's important to really show that it's not a possibility. Um, especially for future projects. And then also I think it'd be important to have a construction narrative um, from someone who would be constructing this potentially. I know you maybe don't have someone lined up, but really how much do you have to dig off? How do you get this um, concrete pad footing in here? How much do you need to dig off the side of that? What needs to be excavated? And then also with the perimeter drain, how much we think we're gonna be pumping of water out of here too? include that with um, the information coming in. Okay. Yeah, there wouldn't be any pumping. It would be yeah. gravity. And then also, I think well, Peter, I just, yeah, how much Peter water is going to come? Yeah, how much water is going to come out of there, um, too? Okay. And then also, too, you know, we've um, with what we've done so far, we've expended the peer review funds. Um, so if we continue that, we're going to need a new proposal. I think it would be useful as far as the whole tree removal um, within that wetland. There's, there's a lot of stuff coming out of there. I understand some's dead. Some's declining, um, but there's no replacements proposed in there. Um, and what was said by the arbors was it's it's really rocky and it's hard to do that. But things that, can, yeah, yeah, maybe they can provide some insight on what could be beneficial to help with that wetland uh, because you know right. we typically would require some type of re replacements, um, especially this is in a wetland. So I think that that would be useful. So I'm not sure how the commission, if you want to get them to flag these trees. Our next site visit would be July 5th to go out there. So if we can flag the trees by then, um, yeah. Yeah. go out there, take Add a look the at list. that. 
flag by then. We can can yeah, I absolutely? Yeah. Can I get your permission, Mr. Buchanan, to go on a different day? Yeah, like any time you want. Okay. Yeah, um, this, yeah. Are you going to come earlier? I'll flag him earlier if you want. No, it, it, I'm, I'm going to be on vacation on the Fourth of July, and next week's quite busy. So it'll so be I'll after. Probably, probably go after. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So there'll be so I have him flagged by the fifth. Uh, so yeah. next week for the fifth. Yeah. Okay. You, Great. So next would meeting? the board want? the peer reviewer to go out there to look at the trees I, I, I just I'm just saying we need to, I, 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 we need to know that I want to spend money for the peer reviewer on the trees well I'm, I'm just gonna say I don't know on the yeah, trees well, I'm not saying just the trees I mean for um, like a restoration plan including what if something could be look, done I, I've spent a lot of money with Joe it's like you guys it, like know Joe he's worked with you it's like I, 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 I do, I've already spent a lot of money on seven meetings. These guys, I got to pay these guys every meeting. I don't want to pay for a peer review or for the trees. Okay. We didn't disagree you guys, with that. We're, you, no, you know, it's like, with that. You didn't hear us. Pardon? We're, we're not interested in a peer review okay. for trees. Okay. Thank you. Right. Are you and we'll put together the mitigation plan. With, and I'm with, sure that are you interested in continuing with part of what the peer review was to look at project options and provide feedback? I'm just asking, I'm not saying they have to, I'm just saying as staff, yeah. this was part of what we had discussed and I need to make sure we do the proper paperwork here, if so. Well, if options come up, then you're going to have to make a decision. Whether you want I, to I think that's an open, or, we haven't seen the options yet, Beck, the options. so right. until we yeah. do, then we may ask. That was also discussed last meeting that if the board needed you already agreed that you'd spend the extra money. We don't want them to look at trees, but we may want them to look at some other options. We don't know what they are yet. So yeah, that's not our goal to spend your money, right. okay? Right, I'm not, I wasn't asking to look at the trees and say they're no. dead. We can handle uh, I that. I just right. mean like as part of the mitigation okay. if you want yeah. restoration or whatnot, so. Motion to continue? Yeah, when's the next meeting? 13th uh, of July. July 13th. 13th. Uh, motion to continue the public hearing to the 13th of July. Agree to that? All in favor? What? Do they request it or do we? They, they're requesting it. They're You're just... requiring it and we're requesting it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just didn't hear the request, that's all. But yeah, I'll second the motion for the request of a continuation. Well, I'll be more delicate the next time. <laughs> <laughs> I knew what he was. <laughs> You're a mind reader. All right, I'll, do we get a second? Yeah, yeah I just second. Okay. Eric Gaspar in favor. Ted Winglass in favor. Thank, in favor. You. thank you for your time. Okay, thank you. All right. Thank you, Calvin. That was a nice pair of you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Good report. Lot three. All right. We are down. Oh, yep. You can read that one. Lot three, 20 Fiskill Road and 30 Main Street. Um, future road name, Berry Farm. Notice of intent construction, Lot 68. And, and Carson told us we can't open this and can't can't uh, do anything on this without him so yeah so uh, we got a request today for a written con sorry I'm well I'm just saying for everyone here uh, written continuation Carson was gonna join us this evening from Amsterdam is he in Amsterdam right now or Germany still I'm not sure Amsterdam since you got the written request for continuation um, he did not join us. never commit evening. when you're in Amsterdam to doing anything productive. <laughs> <laughs> what time would have that been midnight <laughs> it's past midnight. midnight. Oh, it's like two in the morning. I think it's, I think it's six now. hours. Oh, it is, yeah. <laughs> two a.m. Well, that is dedication right there. Okay. So they have a written request for continuation to our uh, July 13th meeting. Yeah. yeah. We, we get to six? see them in July. Can I get a motion, official? I'd like to make a motion to approve no. the, or, no. or to, make, to continue Except. the public hearing until July 13th. Yeah. I was going to say approve the continuation, not okay. approve the project. I'll yes. second that motion. <laughs> discussion it's been 16 months we've had this on the, on the jacket <laughs> eric it's six in only favor. for me what <laughs> it's only been six for me <laughs> all in favor eric gaspar in favor ted winglass in favor Lord bishop in favor ted goodwin in favor Ten. All right, 115 Paradise Lane. This is a request for a certificate of compliance dep file number 300-229 um I think this was from the early 90s. This was a development of a single family house. Um, I did get the paperwork that we were waiting on. Um, we had part of it. 
Um, I do have um, a letter of substantial compliance. We went out there and looked at it. Uh, there's no concerns with it. It's a single family house with a septic in the front, well in the back. Um, no concerns. Recommend issuance. There was no um, perpetual conditions on it. With regards to 115 Paradise Lane, I'd like to make a motion to issue a certificate of compliance for DEP file number 300 229. I'll second that motion. 229, that's down there. Yep. Almost a thousand over Wait, that. We had a second? Yep. 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 Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Eric Gaspar in favor. Edwin Glass in favor. Roy Bishop in favor. Ed Goodwin in favor. Hey. I, my watch just alerted me that we did. the NBA draft has started. You see, we're losing Marcus Smart. I saw that. Yeah. That, right? I got yes. I yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. I Becky Old Hamilton, 23 yeah. uh, Old Hamilton Road. So number 12 on here, uh, 23 Old Hamilton Road was an enforcement order. Um, in our letter, uh, we had requested a restoration plan, and then to come back to this meeting with that, I've been working with the property owner and his um, contractor. He's hired Montigny Landscaping. Montigny Landscaping is working on a plan. He was not able to have a plan ready for this evening. He did provide me a letter saying that, you know, he's been obtained to do this. He's working on it, just doesn't have it ready. Um, and the property owner also sent a letter saying that, that he's obtained the services of him and they're working on it and they plan to address all the concerns. Um, so I talked to Ed about it earlier today. Instead of having him come in because they need a little extra time, um, we'll give him um, some a con con continuance to the next meeting, but asking for that plan by July 5th, so that way we can get it in advance to look at it before the meeting, and then if you want to, on, on that July 5th, do a site visit out there to look at it with the plan, too. Yeah. So um, we're just a vote to kind of extend, well, extend the deadline deadline for the enforcement order requirements to July 5th. I think that would yeah. be appropriate. July 5th or July 13th? July 15th to no. submit 15th. the plan. 15th. No, 5th. We only gave them to the 5th because we need it in a lot of amount of time to You want to see the to plan. You. Yeah. yeah. To, for the gotcha. meeting. So it's seven to, days prior to the... Yeah. Submit the restoration plan by July 5th and come to the 713 meeting to discuss such plan. All right. All right. Got you the, want to just do a quick vote favor. to... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. What? Oh, you were doing it. All in favor? Eric Gaspar in favor. Ed Winglass in favor. Roy Bishop in favor. Ed Goodwin in favor. Okay, 392 Main Street. Um, we requested a restoration plan for this. This was the tree cutting behind Old Sturbridge Pizza next to the um, intersection by Old Sturbridge Village right there. Um, the property owner has been working with us on it. He's obtained the services of Glenn Kravosky from EBT Environmental Consultants. Um, and they also have Joe Levesque from Levesque Geometrics working on that. He's the land surveyor. He's in the process of developing an existing conditions plan for us. Glenn has gone out there, flagged the wetlands, inventoried the trees. We're just waiting for that plan to come back in. Um, so that way Glenn can kind of finish the proposal for a restoration plan. Um, so same thing. We asked them to come to this meeting. Um, same thing. They're working on it. Um, we asked them to submit it. Uh, or said they didn't have to come tonight because they didn't have anything to present. So same thing as the last one. Uh, submit the plan by July 5th, um, and then you guys can do a site visit out there that day if you want, and come to the 713 meeting, meeting for discussion of the plan. We haven't taken any formal enforcement action on it. We haven't issued an enforcement order at this time because they've been cooperative. All right. All right. That's good. It's, this is there any action for us? No, just a statement, right? We don't. No enforcement order. Yeah. yeah, we, you know, we gave them a, a notice of noncompliance and told them that we wanted these things for this date, and they were in agreement. So I don't think we really need any force, formal things on that. All uh, right. CPA. Committee updates. Yep. CPA is meeting in September. We haven't met for since the town meeting. Everything went through on the town meeting that we asked for. Um, Trails, I can speak to trails because they, the two grants that, that we, two monies that we gave them for, one was for the bridge. And yeah, there's the Grand Trunk. And, yeah, and the other one was the Grand Trunk. Um, and they have received grants for both. Oh, good. So they wouldn't tell me how much. They're not sure of how much yet. 
but oh, looks like I was gonna say they wouldn't tell you. That what? seems awfully cryptic. What? They wouldn't tell you. That seems awfully cryptic. They just don't know. Me. I'm the last person they would tell. <laughs> Talk to my wife if you want to find out, but not me. Go ahead. 47 Colette Road. Oh, I was just going to say for Lake's advisory, I actually talked to Pat Wondolowski for Cedar Lake. Um, they want to come in and talk to you guys at the beginning of your August meeting. They want to set aside 10 minutes in the beginning just to talk about, they have all those orders of conditions that have, they're over 20 years old now for the lakes, and they were extended and extended and extended, yeah. and then they started changing their management plans. Um, so we told them that, you know, at some point extensions have to stop and that you need to do new plans, especially when there's new management salaries. So they have some questions they want to come in. I did ask them, I said, if you can put your questions together in advance, I might have to contact DEP to get a little guidance that we might not, if they're really technical, we might not have the answers for them. So I'm hoping they get some questions in advance. Didn't I read something in the paper about one of the lakes treating some, not? QQLA. Oh, that's the South Pond. Pond. Yeah. Well, that's the stuff that we, had, we were dealing yeah. with, but I thought I read it at another lake in Starbridge. But maybe I well it is yeah. it's it, it's South Pond in Sturbridge, same lake Cuckoo L A. Maybe that's uh, I'm yeah. not familiar with yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, okay. It's okay. it's like Webster Lake, but yeah. in Sturbridge. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> just so you know, though, um, Big Allen Lake Association, they are working with a firm and coming up with a new management plan. That's what I was reading. For their new management I was strategies, about Big Allen Lake. Yeah. and yeah. they are going to file a new notice of intent, which is which is good. It's what they need to good. be doing. You know, I I just you know get notifications sometimes that are like, oh, we're you know they're supposed to provide us with notification when they start their treatment, but I've seen I'm like I don't. I look up the things you can't treat with a different chemical and you can't treat for different plants like this is why new orders are necessary because they're changing their management strategies they're going after different target species there's different chemicals out there and, and yeah. it's a change of the permit you got to get a new permit so and that's out of our control you can't say so did they start silver uh, of south pond yet no, no. That's no. In july. yeah it's going to start july 17th the week of july 17th it was proposed to start on june 5th but East Brookfield did not issue their orders of conditions, so that got postponed. We had to wait because you got to issue it, and then you got the 10 days. We actually, the other town hadn't issued theirs either, all past deadlines, so um, they just don't have a lot of staff, I think. So so we, we set it back a little bit. All right, Colette Road. Uh, 47 Colette Road. This was an emergency authorization that um, I issued. I spoke to Eric about it um, before going out there. Um, this was a beaver issue. Board of Health issued uh, emergency approval for um, trapping of beavers, the removal of the dam, and they also installed a flow device. Um, so once an agency issues a declaration, it was a public health issue, there was a neighboring well that was underwater. So uh, the water level was to be lowered one foot. They used um, beaver solutions. This is a firm that we've seen a lot. We've actually used them. Um, they went in, um, we don't have to do anything about approval for the trapping. They went in and trapped, and then they went in to do a minor breach and installation of the flow device to bring that water level down the one foot to alleviate the emergency. It can only be for what's to alleviate the emergency. So we did issue that. Um, it just need to ratify that afterwards. Good. I'd like to make a motion that we ratify the emergency authorization for 47 Collette Road. Second the motion. Second, discussion, any? I don't even, yeah, all, all in favor? Eric Gaspar in favor? Yeah. Edwin Glass in favor? Roy Bishop in favor. Good in favor. Oh, that, we, we, um, we do well with Beaver Control now. We used to, there were meetings where I would be in for an hour talking about what they were gonna do with the Beaver. Really? Was when it first started, terrible. Now they quietly do it. The, the Chinese restaurant down behind there. If you get, if you go for a walk down there. It's beautiful. And the beaver are all in there and the stream's running. And uh, well, they're, they're a really unique animal. Yeah. I mean, there's good and bad about them. It depends upon them. What? There's good and bad about them. Oh, yeah. Upon who you... Yeah, but if you're in the wetlands business, it, it, it's, good. it's all good. <laughs> when they were developing. Eric's subdivision. Okay, there's a big pond area in the back. 
Oh yeah. And and there was a big impoundment of beaver in there. And one of the engineers that was working on the development would go in, strip down, and go in and swim with the beavers. And that was his big claim to fame. <laughs> <laughs> I never heard that. <laughs> huh. Was that so, back in the 70s? When, yeah. Uh, I, I, it's a wild, Kool-Aid wild, tests. Yeah, I, didn't wild, move in into, I didn't move in until 2012, so predates my it's days. It's take them, Lance. Yeah. Do I have a motion to... Okay. Ah. I, what? We did do correspondence. Correspondence? Well, we just got that letter last. Got the, each of us oh, were, were given a letter. Oh, yeah. America's letter. And I, I got one at so I don't know what I, I, what I, I don't know what our... Uh, oh, yes. I, I was going to give you an update on that. Yeah, that's this kind of my... Yep. So I did send a letter out to 56 McGilpin Road. I do have um, they a meeting on site next week out there. I'm going to have to uh, step down. Recuse yourself. Uh, recruit, recuse yourself. Oh, recuse Are you the guy there? Now, I'm going to have to address the your address. They're my kids. What's that? They're my children. Oh. Go ahead. Yep. And then um, 138 McGilpin, as I said last time, I, I signed off on that when the building permit came through. Because where they're showing there's wetlands here. I mean, I went back out and went through there. I mean, I didn't go on the property. You can see it from the road. That's an upland field right there. There's wetlands like across the street and further down the road and behind the property. But what they're saying, wetlands is not wetlands there. So I don't see any issues with that property. If you want me to walk it with you and I'm around, I would. You're going out there? Yep. Um, yeah. Yep. I'll be around next okay. week. Then. Yeah. Will be. Um, I just had a couple of other things quickly. Um, also, under correspondence, oh, now I paper clipped it all together. Okay. Um, I did receive um, an email from Gary Magnuson from CMG Environmental. Um, he was working with the, um, the owner of the Kerboys junkyard. Um, he did, they are in receipt of it, um, says they don't agree with it. Um, and then um, they did ask that the board uh, retract it. Um, and then, you know, I did email him back and then I said, um, you know, I'm happy to, or he asked if he could meet with me to kind of go over everything. So I said I could meet with him. But I think that we still need to get on site. Well, if you're asking, I'm not in favor of retracting. I'm not asking to retract. We actually, it was unanimous. Right. So we really haven't got a way to retract because we need a. Well, uh, Eric didn't vote for somebody it. Got, what? Eric didn't vote for it. Yeah. We didn't. The enforcement order for 71 Mashapog Road. Yeah, I did not vote for it. Okay. The applicant is just asking if we would consider retracting. That's for all. what purpose? I don't know. So that they can go back and do what they were well, doing? Well, I can, but I have a fundamental problem with that in general. So I'd have to have a really good reason. Other than, could you please reconsider? Uh, if I had a reason to consider, maybe I would. But at, at this well, point... Well, I can forward you the email if you want they okay just, yeah they got a couple I, I will i will review it and we can pick this up at the next meeting yes technically i did not no why don't you just give it to him now it's a short memo okay just read it i mean we're <laughs> going to do this we get it over with i mean yeah we're going to have another agenda here, okay? for the 13th <laughs> did you ever get any paperwork from them on the transfer of ownership and the activity of uh... got class two licenses, correct? Yeah. They found uh, like a long history of class two licenses. That's to sell the cars, certain cars. The class three is what would be the dismantling and selling parts, the junkyard yeah. part of it. Um, they asked the town to look. I know they asked. I asked the TA's office. Michelle in that office, and she had stated that she was only asked to look for the class two. But when she was looking four things she didn't see any class three licenses so um, it's unclear if they had those or not or if there's just missing records or not. so though I always retain all of my options so I will not act upon this at this point <laughs> so it, all right so Ed recused himself over this correspondence so is this something we just need to read and and 
Do we, we need to go? I only brought it up because we left it. We were all handed it, and and there's a statement about one of us. Uh, it doesn't matter who it is, but I think we have a, a we have an op we have an obligation to respond yes. to the, what you've done. Yes. That yes. That was the purpose yep. of my yep. inquiry. How can you yep. respond to an anonymous well, citizen? Well, he means look into it, I guess. Oh. So right, I, and I did say at the last meeting that I would start researching yeah. it, and I did, and I researched both a little bit and then I you know figured out what I saw for the 138 I don't see any issue there with that and then I I have that appointment to go out to the other property too so when is that Wednesday 10 o'clock okay leave send me an email okay just just when you don't have to go out alone just got all kinds of pen pals the last few meetings I got another one in my house jeez got a lot of fans I guess apparently all right we're in the club. All right, agent Where's report. Your... Is there anything? The, it was just those things on there. Yeah. Oh, and the board of selectmen approved the position change in the wetland fund vote Tuesday night. Excellent. Congratulations. Good job. There you go. Good, Darren too. Yeah. yeah, I like it. I would. All right. Make motion to adjourn. I second that. All in favor. Aye. Aye.